Attention, brave viewers. This video features adults immersed in a spine-chilling horror RPG experience. The content likely includes supernatural elements, horror-related events, and potentially scenes of violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Enjoy. So this has been, without question, the most challenging probably two and a half months on the channel of successfully getting a game to go as scheduled. Um, as you can see, a few things. One, we're missing Brian. Two, we're not playing Forbidden Lands as a result. So unfortunately, Brian's internet died on him. So we're going to pinch hit again to the game that's getting the most plays on the channel lately, which is Zombie World. This is a game by Magpie Games. It is a card-driven game. Um, the box set is phenomenal. Um, my recommendation is if you buy the box set for Magpie, go ahead and get uh, both of the other two enclaves and the mini expansions. Just get them all. That way you don't do it three different times like I did to pay shipping because it's all pretty awesome. Um, the idea is, is that we start off with nothing but a premise, which is the zombie apocalypse has occurred. And then step by step, we're going to create our enclave, which is where we live during this zombie apocalypse. Then we're going to create some characters. We're going to create an inciting incident, and then we're going to play. It's an adaptation of Powered by the Apocalypse, so you're going to see us using the move type system. Um, and I'll walk everybody through it as we play. There's two other playthroughs with two other different sets of players, if you want it, uh, see it. So speaking of which, the first thing we need to do, gentlemen, is figure out our enclave. Now, by default, we have a choice of prison, hospital, farm, or mall. Unfortunately, you are the third group, so your choices are more limited. They have taken the prison. That exists in the Third Floor Wars universe. A hospital is already an enclave somewhere in the TFW greater multiverse. <laughs> so are you three going to be based in a farm or a mall? Mm. This is a tough call. Is a I, tough can go call. Either, I can go either way on that one. <laughs> I, I'm pro farm personally. Dave's huh? pro farm. You're pro yeah. farm, huh? If you're pro farm, then we can have the farm, I guess. Yeah, I think I think we've got one strong opinion, so let's let's go with the farm. All right, let's go to you the You don't want to be the beacon of capitalism that is the mall. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it could be fun destroying them all, but <laughs> it's gonna be like a factory farm. <laughs> okay. So let me pull out advantages mall. Let me show that. So I've got that available to me. All right. So now the uh, farm has a couple bonuses to it. I'm going to switch over so that the audience can see. So first off, the farm has a perimeter. So when you scout the area around your enclave and set up warning trap and set up warning traps, draw survival on a hit, you're protected. You'll have fair warning before any threats arrive. On a triumph, everyone in the enclave can clear one stress as they relax. And on a mist, you spot signs that something has already crossed your perimeter. So that's an advantage to the farm. The other advantage is fertile fields. When you take the time to plant, tend to, or harvest your food, draw survival on a hit. When the next time passes, you can clear food scarcity or hold three. Spend your hold to offer food to an NPC from another enclave and take a triumph on the ask an NPC for help move. All right. But what we're going to focus is on the right-hand side. Uh, Jim, if you don't mind, I'm going to put you in charge of recording uh, the enclave card. Um, you can do that using the, the text tool on the far left, and there's an enclave card in the upper right-hand corner. Don't worry about, like, having to jump all over it. So right now we come up with one scarcity and one population by default. So you see the farm two card. So a scarcity that we already have is no suburban comforts. So there's no televisions, no refrigerators, things that are kind of typical of that. In a population, there's a local farm family that lives in this enclave with you. And we'll maybe encounter them. Maybe they'll be a part of this game. If we need to, we'll define them more. 
We need two more scarcities, two more population, two more advantages, and two more surroundings. So we'll do that round robin. I'm going to start with you, Dave. Do you want to pick a scarcity, a population, a surrounding, or an advantage? Mm, I think we're going to go with a scarcity. Okay. And uh, we're just coming out of winter, and there is no food. Now, has the farm pretty much sustained itself uh, with like planting and things like that and small animals mm -hmm. or is it a combination of you still have people scrounging and scouting outside the perimeters um how have you how is the how has the farm been been working so far um so we've been uh you know losing people kind of like on a nor like a normal zombie rate okay. uh and so our food stores that we all collected that's, last that's nzr by the way <laughs> one nzr one nzr <laughs> um <laughs> so when we collected the um harvest last fall we had a bunch and then you know through cold and zombie stuff uh you know we're we're doing okay so we're towards the tail end of winter it sounds like food is getting a little scarce um people are starting to get a little nervous all right Nate, and we do this. Um, what is the term when you like go first, second, third, like third? Draft. Yeah, snake snake draft. Draft. yeah, so it's like a snake draft. So, Nate, we pick our second scarcity, we would pick a surroundings, a population, or an advantage. And just because it's really it's drawing my eye, I gotta go with the significant cave system. Oh, for surroundings, yep. excellent. Surroundings. All right, where the hell is this cave system? So we've got the farm. I assume mm. the farm is on relatively fat, but if we have a cave system. Is this a, do we have a, we have the foothills of the mountains? Like where's, talk to me. Um, I'm thinking like at least a hillier area. Um, so just, just very, very prone, prone to caves. Probably, I mean, probably significantly Midwest, I would guess. Now, pretty ambiguous right mm -hmm. so are these natural caves have are these caves that were used before the apocalypse for some other reason or don't we know I'm thinking i'm thinking like a natural cave system okay. um maybe with the infrastructure for tourism prior to our our got collapse it. um yeah that's what i've got in mind and my last question about the significant caves is is this something that the farm goes to and leverages a lot or is it kind of it's out there and it's we're really not super familiar with it it might be a um a place to like hide things essentially so any um less than uh, anything you want hidden might get utilized. And is that hidden as the farm hides things or are people in the farm hiding shit there from each other? I could, I could see people like hiding stuff in, in, in different caves. Okay. Hiding their secrets. <laughs> Jim, you've got two choices now. What's your first choice? Oh my gosh. I didn't, I didn't realize like we talked about it and I still hadn't quite realized that I have to pick two in a row now. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> uh, I feel like uh, we've got a bunker. Okay, so I'm going to mark bunker as an advantage. Wait, are you doing the little blue X's? I am. Happening? Okay. You said you wanted me to keep track of it, so... Oh, uh, the, there's an Enclave card on the far right-hand corner of the playmat. Don't worry about it. I'm distracting you. So, a bunker. Talk to me about this bunker, Jim. Uh, I expect that uh, at one point the, the original uh, owners of this farm were... Uh, you know, a bit of a bit of preppers. So they they have themselves, uh, you know, a sealed off a little survival -y area. Um, I don't think it's big enough for everyone, but it's you know, it's it, it serves as, a, as as an emergency, you know, huddle hole. Got it, got it, got it. So does it fit everyone but really uncomfortably or does it fit not everyone ever? <sighs> you know, uh, uh, 
I don't know the answer to that. I guess it might depend on the population choices. <laughs> All right. So what's key about the bunker, and I'm going to take the bunker card and put it next. Whoops, I'm drawing. And I did not mean to do that. And I'm going to switch to that. I'll tell you one thing. Nothing against roll 20, but I'm really used to foundry. Um, all right, let's talk about the advantages of the bunker. When you usher yourself and others into the bunker for safety, you draw survival. On a hit, you are safe. The door is treated as perfectly barricaded until something changes. On a triumph, the safety is palpable, and everyone inside clears one stress. But on a miss, you find evidence that the bunker's safety has been breached. All right. All right, so I've got a bunker as an advantage. So, Jim, we need one more scarcity one more surrounding, one more advantage, and two more population. What uh, do you I'm going to choose a group of stranded tourists to play off Ooh, Nate's case. System. Very nice. So we had some tourists that were at the cave system. The apocalypse, the zombies come out. They end up in the enclave. That is correct. I wanted to find them a little bit more and I'm, I'm going to give you two choices or you can, so you can choose a B or C none of the above. I've got a better idea, Craig. Okay. <laughs> a is like a mixture of families, senior citizens, you know, that were at the, at this cave system when it happened or it was a child, it was a uh, middle school field trip. Or C, none of the above. Oh. Uh, I think I like a, a the the mixture of families more than a, than a middle school trip only because okay. I don't want to have to deal with like a bunch of really a really bunch, bunch of hooligans. Def, <laughs> definitely high on the priority list during this. Um, so I'm going to pitch this idea because I'm here. It's just the only thing that I know of in the Midwest it, from Nate's plan is they were at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> they were running away from it. <laughs> and I don't know what that means about them, but I just <laughs> like Cooper's 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 Cooperstown is the wrong spot. So that is okay. Crazy. I like that. But... <laughs> so so that means that that they were tourists from a location outside of here. They stayed together as tourists and ended up here. How do we feel about that, Jim and Nate? Yeah. Works for me. Love it. All right, back to you, Nate. I need another population, another advantage, another surroundings, and another scarcity. <laughs> yeah, Sidewinder, I don't mean to uh, bemoan Roll20. I'm sure it's more user error than anything. I'm yeah. just super used to Foundry. <laughs> we were talking uh, about that when I got on. I'm used to Tiptop Simulator. I keep trying to move around with the <laughs> WASD keys. Drive me nuts. Between the cave and being on a farm, I imagine we have a water source. So we've got oh, we've got natural right. spring water. Natural spring. All right, where are you seeing natural water? Advantages. Advantages. Perfect. Water right source. At the bottom. Got it. Okay. So you're saying water source. So let's take a look at water source. I'm going to put it next to our enclave. Uh, when you fetch water for the enclave, draw survival on a hit, you bring back plenty. Everyone in the enclave can clear one stress. On an edge, you inadvertently draw danger. It follows you home, and on a miss, something is wrong with the water source. And the GM will tell you what has soured this resource. Okay, so we are now set on advantages, Dave. Yeah, I, I think that we... Um... So I think we are by a thick forest. So I think that we, I'm not really high on the Midwest. Is that true that a thing like that exists in the Midwest? I assume it does. Yeah, true. no, that could, does. that could work. True now. Yeah. So um, thick forest, is that considered a place of danger or, or, a, res or a place for gathering resources? So does the, how does the farm perceive the forest? I think uh, the farm perceives the forest as the reason why we didn't get bombarded by more tourists right so these guys kind of took a wrong term at albuquerque they came down their little old road through mm -hmm. the big old scary forest and found us and we're like oh man we're so lucky that like 
12 truckloads or busloads of kids and, and families didn't find us. And so I think it's like a protected barrier. It feeds nice. us. It's, you know, it's a plus. So it sounds to me, Dave, like you're imagining a very long, like there's the main road and there's a very long road that winds through this forest that eventually ends up in the farm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it like gets rocky and gnarly up the hills. So it's like, you know, it's not like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm in my Beamer and I'm going to like yep. drive up to a farm. All right. Snake, get another one, Dave. Place. <laughs> I've got a scarcity or population I need from you. Um, back to me. I think that we, um, so I think we have a pair of local hunters mm. in our, um, in our uh, spot, because I think that they, um, you know, they were in the woods hunting and, you know, came over to us. I, I think that they've been uh, a little scarce on the food though, that we thought, you know, the first season or two, we're like, oh man, these guys are good. They're catching stuff and less stuff. Now it's just a crow. How would you characterize their relationship with the general population at the farm? Are they considered uh, very important, uh, almost leadership? They're looked to favorably. Uh, are they uh, kind of because they're kind of local yokels? They kind of keep to themselves, especially with a bunch of tourists that are now in this enclave. Like, what what, what kind of vibe are they getting and given? Do you think? Uh, I think that they are. Um like have a leadership position but not like they're not like if this is a church group there's like the dude that says like the things like i'm in charge and here's the rules and that's not them there's like one that's in charge that's actually in charge and his voice carries weight or her voice carries weight mm -hmm. and the other one is like you know around got it all right finish this out nate i need another scarcity all right um what are we short on going with our um mildly inept hunters scarcity of weapons got it notably they ran out of ammo a good a good while ago yeah they weren't <laughs> humping pounds and pounds and pounds of <laughs> so are we imagining they're like down to spears bows and arrows at this point yeah they're using whatever makeshift weaponry we can make out of farm equipment and wood <laughs> So when we say scarcity of weapons, it sounds like we're talking more like modern type weapons. Yeah. Is it a scarcity of weapons or a scarcity of ammo or both? Probably. I mean, I imagine they probably didn't have a ton of weapons to begin with, like maybe a couple hunting rifles. Um, yeah. So no, scarce, scarce yeah. on general yeah. weapons and on ammo. Okay. So last question. Is this a self-imposed scarcity or not? So is there people in charge of the farm that does not give the population access to these weapons or controls mm. these weapons, or is just the farm just doesn't have a ton of weapons or, 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 or ammo. Or are they locked away? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I could, I could definitely see whatever head of house of the, of the farm family having, having a stash that is not, especially after the, the hunters have proven themselves less than adequate has not been um, divulged to the general populace. All right. So now I'm going to go to the far right on our enclave card. We have got our scarcities. We've got uh, food supplies running low. We've got our tourists, pair of local hunters, cave system, thick forest. What we don't have is what does everybody call this place? What do we call ourselves? This the last one. Oh, what do we call this? Place? Prosperity Fields Ranch. <laughs> All right. Prosperity Fields. Done. Okay. So welcome to Prosperity Fields. Now I need to figure out the three of you. So each of you go to your card. You, each of you have a playmat card. And by the way, all these things are, are really nice physical things in the Magpie set. They're all dry erase, which is great. So when you finish doing all of this, you just wipe away the cards and the choices and, and you know put them back in the box. All right, so first off, you're going to get four cards that I'm going to deal to each of you. I'm going to deal each of you a past card. That is who you were before the apocalypse. You keep that secret. When you read your past card, you'll see that there's something that happens if you reveal it. 
Typically, it gives you some sort of a bonus. It creates a moment during play where we find out Dave actually was a dirty cop before he came to the farm, right? <laughs> um, so you'll, you'll draw that and you'll keep that in your hand. Next, I will give you two present cards. That's the role you play in Prosperity Fields. Uh, you'll get to choose one or the other. So Jim's favorite, we're going to draw two, pick one. Okay. The other one you'll discard, the other one you'll play on your present area on your play mat. And that's who you're, who you are now. Then I'm going to give each of you a trauma, which you're going to keep in your hand. This is why you're not okay. And again, you'll flip that for some sort of event or bonus, um, but you'll keep it secret up to that point. So let's start dealing out some cards. Let's start off with our past. I'm going to deal one. to why does it not oh i hate this one to dave i'm going to deal one to nate oh that's the wrong nate <laughs> okay <laughs> some other nate deal. Out in the bottom corner somewhere. all right and then a past also goes to jim all right so i'll give you guys a chance to look at it is there a way to make those cards large enough for me you to read easily? click on the center and it should enlarge it for you ah uh, i didn't want it to accidentally reveal it but nope, it does, does not reveal it all right so that's who you were before the zombie apocalypse. Nobody knows that. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages to revealing it. Each card will tell you some of the advantages that you'll get by revealing it. Also, if someone's trying to help you, the better they know you, the more they can help you. So part of what they flip when they try to help you is how many revealed cards you have. By default, uh -huh. only everybody only has one. But if someone's trying to manipulate you, they also get a bonus the better they know you. Um, so kind of a neat little mechanic All right next let's figure out who you are now so each of you i'm going to deal two and nate there's your two Pick, you're going to decide between them dave you should now have two mm -hmm. all right So let's start. Who did I deal with? I dealt to Nate first. So Nate, do me a favor. Deal both of your cards out first. So right above, okay. right above your area there. Let's see what your two cards are. All right. You got Trickster and Refugee. And Refugee. Which of those two are you going with? Um, oh, no, I can't look at them. I can zoom hey, you can. Just click on the center. You should be able to double click them and they should come big again. Or you should be able to zoom in too. Yeah, you can just zoom in now that they're out here. Um, let's see. Are you a refugee refugee or a trickster? Uh let's go with refugee. All right. So you should be able to I'll do it here for you. I'll get rid of trickster. I'll put refugee right there on present. So talk to me. What does this mean? Oh, you get enclave. four allies. Yeah. You and a few other people, four allies, recently escaped from another enclave. When you open up to someone about how horrors you witnessed at the other enclave, draw survival instead of soul. And on a miss, you reveal too much and mark too stress. You can clear one stress when you protect someone from your old colony. So I owe you four allies. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, all right. So when we get to the allies. You don't get one ally. You get four allies. So that's Goodness. pretty cool. Dave, deal your four card or your two cards down. All right. So if I do this. You should be able to just drag them out. Ooh, juggernaut or faithful. What are you thinking? Uh, I think I'm going to go uh, juggernaut because I would normally go faithful. And I was thinking about being just like, I don't know. You're going to go juggernaut? Yeah. All right. So 
when you smash your way through scenery to get to or away from something, draw savagery on a hit. You get what you want on an edge. You mark stress and leave something behind or take something with you on a miss. You smash through without care. Draw a card from the bite deck. Clear one stress when you break something pristine, valuable, or impressive. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I'm not going to ask you until you get your trauma, but we're starting to see these things form here. Jimbo. All right, let's see. And you said I can just drag them out. You should be able to drag them right to your car, to your play mat. Uh, let me find my card again. Sorry, I went to look at Dave's card. Oh, I don't see that didn't land. Profit. Ooh, Profit or leader. Or leader. Oh, I'm not a good leader. Man. This is called role playing, Jim. <laughs> right, Jim Getting into a certain position here. <laughs> this is super interesting, Jim. Uh. I know you haven't even gotten to read the other card. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think I have to choose profit. Love it. I was hoping you would. All right. So you believe the apocalypse was brought by the world's sins. You have a close group of four. Look at that, all these allies. Close it's group fine. of four allies to whom you've converted to your faith. Their devotion is ironclad. You clear stress when you gain a new convert, severely punish someone for their sins, or get the enclave to adopt a religious prohibition. Oh boy, no one's going to like Jim. (laughs) Except for his four allies. All right. And each of you uh, need a trauma, don't you? So let's take those out. I suppose. (laughs) Is a zombie apocalypse not traumatizing enough, Craig? It's my trauma that I have to deal with Jim. (laughs) <laughs> uh, all right jim oh that's and funny but not least that's funny dave all right i'll give you guys a second to look at your traumas that, uh that kind of changed my mood on things <laughs> <laughs> so our characters are starting to form All right, this is one for each of you. Um, You can use your typing tool or you can freehand this. It doesn't matter. But you've got four stats. You've got savagery. That's doing violence. Soul is your ability to connect with people um, and to manipulate people. Uh, Steel is your mental fortitude. And then survival is your ability to survive. Everyone's going to have a three in something, a two in two things, and a one in something else. So go ahead and fill in where you want your three, your two twos, and your one. I think that's got to be the three. And then yell when you're ready to show the class. A prophet, a juggernaut, and a refugee super interesting all right i got mine you got yours all right dave we ended up with three savagery one soul two steel two survival why those choices what are we starting to think about this person uh i think that um i just just like i'm angry and uh i, I want to <laughs> beat things beat things dead and uh yeah, so like I can go and like find some food. I can like run away and pretty like you know relatively hard one. But I like I just been a lot of fighting. You're somebody trying to play a board game, and nobody knows the rules, and it's really hot out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I, but I'm not the kind of guy that like would then go away and like I'd be like, okay, I just need to go cool down. There's no. Cool <laughs> There's no cool down. There's, there's, there's no stuff. hammock in which to take a nap. Yeah. Oh, about it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go over to Nate. Nate, where did you put your three? Uh, so I've got my three in steel. Why steel? I feel like we've got a very kind of an old soul kind of person. Mm. Um, local to this, uh, this local farm. Um, so kind of has a bit of a so you're thinking uh, kind you're of an iron will a refugee from someplace close. Yeah. Got it. I think I think even even another like another kind of similar local farm situation that uh did not fare as well due to 
less natural protections. Got it, got it, got it. And why only one in soul? Um, kind of a less personable individual. Um, mostly sticks to sticks to the folks he's closer to and is a little can be a little harsh. <laughs> got it, Jim. Three and steel. I chose so what, three and steel. Why do you have a great capacity for staying calm and in control? Uh, I I feel like he is a uh, a, a calculated person who uh, is. Uh, always assessing the situation and, and manages to and, and keeps all of that is in terms of uh, his his perceptions of all of the reality around him and is is very aware and keeps all of that together. And then survival. Why only a one? Uh, only a one in survival because uh, honestly, I didn't want the one in either of the other two. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Okay, so now we have got our stats. The last two things we're going to do is we're going to establish relationships, and then we're going to deal out our allies. Now, your allies, when I deal them out, these are people that you're very close with. They're NPCs. I will control them. But one of your basic moves is to have an ally do something. So you can order one of your allies to do something, and that's an actual move in the game. Right. But these are these are the people that are closest to you. They look up to you. They trust you. It's kind of your little mini bubble. Um, how close the three of you are. We're going to find that out first, though. So let's go to relationships. All right. First, the relationship between Dave and Jim. I'm going to play the card between here. The two of you agreed to mutually aid each other. What are each of you getting out of it? So don't need to answer that now. We'll answer that in play. But you've agreed to aid each other. And obviously each of you are getting something from that. And in play, we'll decide what that is. Now, Dave and Nate. Dave and Nate. The two of you have done something awful for the Enclave. What was it? So together you did something awful, but it was for the Enclave. And in play, we're going to have to find out what that is. Last but not least, the old soul Nate against the prophet Jim. Not against. Maybe it'll be best buds. Let's see. The two of you had a brief but intense blow up. What brought you to conflict? All right. So we have our relationships. Last but not least, let's talk about our allies. I'm going to start off with the one boring person, which is, I think you, Nate, you only get one of them, right? I get four. It's, well, you get four. Dave. Who's Dave. 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 I got Dave. Well, the normal. Dave gets one, one person. Dave, I have given you randomly. Tasha Fuller. I want you to, we're going to come back to you. You're going to tell me about Tasha. Okay. Okay. We got to figure out who's following our prophet, Jim. One of the people following is Meg Lim. Also following is Robin Fisher. <laughs> it's going to all be women. Another one <laughs> following is a lie of, Alanya Vass. It is all women. That's amazing. And also <laughs> Maxine Galloway. Jim, what did you do? Jim, <laughs> this is your flock. I want you to spend a little time looking them over. We're going to come back and you're going to tell me a little about a little about what's going on with Jim and his four women. All right, Nate, you are a refugee. These are the people that came with you uh, from that other enclave that escaped with you, right? Mm -hmm. um you have got sally you have got monty we have danny and we have roman he, he, he. <laughs> All right, I want to come back. Um, Dave, what have we figured out about you and Tasha? Um, 
I think that I had gotten in a bit of a scrap and uh, went to visit her because she's a nurse to get patched up. And I think that, you know, her as someone that is a little bit empathetic, um, you know, really, um, really kind of like took a, a liking to me as like a stray, right? Like I'm like I was a like a violent puppy dog and she was like trying to trying to nurse me back to humanity is this a maternal relationship a romantic relationship a brother sister relationship what is this more maternal than anything more maternal? I, I think she sees me as like someone that she needs to uh you know nurse back to like peopleness ah she's trying to save you in her own little way mm -hmm. from being less of a shitty person it's not my fault that board game sucks Jim, we're not going to go over all four, but I want you to give me a general idea of what the hell's going on here with Robin, Meg, Maxine, and Alanya. Uh, I, I think that, you know, that like any collection of, uh, I'm sure, followers, like in, in, in an organization like this, there are there are very levels of believers. And I, I feel like if if anything, like Meg is our is our true believer. Like, uh, and, and I get the feeling that that Robin is more of a follower of convenience than anything else. Um, but I'm not quite sure what has brought us all together uh, beyond that. Uh, That's okay. That uh, the, 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 the world is clearly a terrible place and, uh, and we're all being punished and we, we need to work together to, to save humanity. All right, Nate. Have you started to figure out what the hell happened here with the five of you? Yeah, I think I think this is again like the the last the last remnants of of another of another enclave. So I'm Was thinking it Sally's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think um my character whoever he ends up being um was a was a farm hand on on Sally's farm. Got it. Um, the uh the late the late Mr. Nelson uh, unfortunately did not did not escape the uh the clutch of the zombies. Uh Mr. Mr. Monty was a uh local local newsman. Um uh, you know with not a lot to do given small town. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny, local bicycle carrier, um good at moving moving things that needed moved. Good on a bike, good to get between the farm and town and Roman Roman was basically uh uh, go between between you know local shop and farm to farm to table got it got it got it now um it was sally's farm you guys have escaped you hinted at this and we don't have to you don't have to answer this we can have this come out and play but there's really kind of two ways well really three ways i think categorically within this um trope that we that other the other enclave collapsed it was overrun by zombies mm -hmm. There was an internal conflict and it destroyed itself or there was an outside non-zombie threat that caused it. So think about that. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and throw some names down. Jim. Oh, you got me going what do people first. call you? Uh, I think people call me Zeke. Zeke. Dave, what do we call you? Len Johnson. Len? Len. L-Y-N-N or L-E-N? L-E-N. Okay, got it. I've got Zeke. I've got Len. Last but not least, I have... Hmm. Len Zeke. It's gotta be a Z name for Forbidden Lands players. Yeah, yeah, no. Um <laughs> Zygopher. <laughs> Zertogopher. <laughs> I'm thinking Troy. Troy. 
All right. I'm going to have Dave set our opening scene. Dave, here's the constrictions. You you build this um, and get, and obviously Nate and Jim can contribute to this, but this is where I want to open us. Um, I want late afternoon um, on the fields farm and just the three of you are together. Uh, kind of just hanging out together and you build it from there. So is this something you guys regularly do? Are you doing it? just randomly but set the scene for me dave um so i think um we're doing um normal chores i think we're like out checking the the like um seeds because it's just about coming out of winter right like checking the um like the pen for i don't know uh, chickens or something, getting eggs, something, something basic. And, you okay, know, speak. it's our turn. Our sure. So three of you are on, on pen duty, kind of cleaning up. Um, Jim is the, th as you are there with Lennon Troy. Um, let's start off with, Troy is not doing something right now the way you think it should be done. Oh, Troy. Uh, <laughs> and you said we're, we're, we're doing chores, huh? Uh, now, now you know that those, those chickens won't, won't eat that. If you throw it that way, you've got to, you've got to spread it fine, spread it fine. Zeke. They're chickens. They'll eat whatever you throw at them. <sighs> City folk. What I think he's really trying to say is if we just add a little bit of, you know, a little bit of guts in here, maybe from like a raccoon or something, I think the chickens will eat it up a little better. Yeah, well. There we go. So you guys I are mean, working around the farm. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Dave. Yeah. Uh, one thing I don't get, though, you know, Zeke, every time we, you said we had to put up this, like, uh, you know, wavy car sales balloon man guy over here because <laughs> they're going to scare off the hawks. I swear to God, that thing's going to murder us with zombies. Are you sure you need that? Bit extreme for a scarecrow. Well, the, the times are what they are. Beggars can't be choosers, and it it minds itself. Yeah, I'm sure you just think it's one of your uh, little girls that had in there in your sermons. You know that's not Meg, right? <laughs> Obviously. All right. How old is Zeke? I, I'm gonna say like mm, uh, mid forties. Right. See, so the three of you are attending to things now. What has happened behind the scenes is I have flipped a a uh, time passes card, which gives an inciting incident. You do this to begin the game. Uh, to start start the ball rolling. But as we play, if we kind of settle things, things come to a close, then we'll do another time passes and then something else is going to happen because it sucks. This sucks. Troy, as you're kind of getting corrected uh, by Zeke on, on, on how you do chickens, you're out in the middle of kind of the chicken yard. And if you've ever worked on a chicken farm, those watching, you know, chickens are assholes. Um, mm -hmm. and there you've got two of the roosters that immediately are just pecking at your, at, at your boots. And we can see the, the, the leather scarring on your boots, because this is not the first time that both of these roosters have decided you are, you are not going to take over the pecking order, um, on this. So I'm imagining Troy, you kind of kicking them away. Like you've done more than once. And we see as you kick with your right foot, your left foot goes into the ground. Ooh. And the Zeke and Glenn, you see Troy fall into the ground, and now his entire left leg is in some sort of a hole. 
I can't do anything right. <laughs> what tarnation? <laughs> Someone get me out of this hole. Troy, it's the first hole you found yourself in years. I think you should enjoy it a bit. All right, Lynn, don't be don't be gross. Get over here. I need a hand. I'm um, uh I'll walk over and, and just rip him out. Like no no chat. No no chat. Doink. No 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 like ease out and they're just like <laughs> like he's a child. You just, <laughs> just pull him right out of the <laughs> out of the hole. And Troy, he lifts you right out and mm -hmm. you realize it's not a hole. What I don't think you realize is that this intricate cave system expands much farther than you realized. Because as you kind of look back to what you fell into, you see the caves where the entrance is a good quarter, half mile from here. And you knew those things were extensive. But the fact that they extended this far to that they're under the farm, that's news. All right, we got to fetch flashlight. This is... Ugh. Hey, Man, this whole place is... Get away from the hole. I'm kicking the chickens away from the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them are... They're idiots. <laughs> they're not drowning by looking up at the rain. They're falling into the hole. <laughs> uh, a damn rooster's going to get himself killed. Sooner oh, rather than later, I suppose. All right. Uh, I'll grab, I don't know, a chunk of wood, like a pallet or something we got laying around and shove it over the hole as you go get flashlight assuming that's a person i was like name. is that a person is that a, is that a, is Wait. that an actual flashlight what are you so that was a... yeah len you're doing that troy you're like I'm, yeah, I'm gonna go get some flashlights i'm kind of the uh the fence that's around it i've just drawn a population card uh you can see it on your far right there's good old tim tim's kind of leaning up against um the fence and he looks over and he goes i swear to god we better we we, we got to turn you into farmers or you're gonna keep effing this place up who's who dug the hole maybe if your damn farm wasn't built over a cave the whole place gonna collapse around your ears whoa, one of these days whoa, 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 swear whoa. to god what do you what do you mean built over a cave? You know what I mean, built over a cave. So he might be like in his late 40s, but he hops over that fence like he's a 22 year old. He flips over that. Whoa, OK, <laughs> comes right over and he goes. Holy shit, I think you're right, Troy. Yeah. Yeah. This is dangerous. Uh, that, well, yeah, one, I don't want people falling through this, but man, there's parts of them. There's parts of them's caves we haven't explored yet. That's true. Hey, Zeke. Yes, Tim. What do you think about, like, getting a bunch of your girls to go, like, go down there and poke <laughs> around and figure out what's going on? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They'll do whatever you ask them to do. Uh, Yeah, well... We should send a, a, a search party to, to investigate the area. Nah, just not a search party. Everybody's got a job here, and then you've got your little flock here. Let's just take one of those one of those girls of yours and just, like, send them down there. And if they come back, we're safe. And if not, then we'll send another one. Well, that seems rude. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll, we'll send Maxine. All right. We'll get getting. Uh, yeah, Troy, Lynn, and I, we're going to stay here and make sure nothing comes out of this hole. So go go get one of your uh your lambs. All right, Craig, I'm directing. Is that what's happening? Am I? I don't know. You you for... tell me what you think... don't worry about nothing. You tell me what's uh, happening. All right, I think I'm gonna head off and I'm gonna find Maxine and I'm gonna ask Maxine to. I think we're gonna go. I'm gonna ask her to go through the cave this way, through the hole. What do you mean a cave? What are you talking about, Zeke? The, the, the boys found access to the cave system under the farm. And uh, we're hoping that you could use your skills and figure out exactly how to get from here to there in this cave system. Does, does that mean I can stop praying? Because hmm. I still got another hour. 
we'll take a break for now. Okay. And should I go get the thing that I got hiding under the rock? Just in case. Okay. And, and, and am I going down there by myself? Oh, is she going down there by herself, Greg? That's a good question. Yeah, take take Robin. So I, I, I kind of feel better if you came with me. All right, I'll go too. Great. Splitting the party. It's going to be fun. All right, so you're going to ask an NPC for help. This is going to be our first move. When you ask a friendly or a neutral NPC for help, you're going to draw a soul. What do you have in soul, Zeke? Uh, what do I have in soul? Uh, I think I have a two in soul. All right, so on a triumph, they'll do what you want if you give them a bribe or a motive. On an edge, the GM will tell you what they want to do it, and then they'll return the favor. So go to the uh, survivor deck. Survivor deck, I'm going to draw two cards. Two cards, one for each. I'm going to try to figure out how to see them again. <laughs> What'd you draw? I drew an opportunity and an edge. Okay, so let's talk about the edge. We already know what happens with the edge. The opportunity can be a miss or a triumph. You do nothing, it's a miss. If you spend a stress, it's a triumph. So in a triumph, they'll do what you want. If you give them a bribe, if you want to use that edge, the GM will tell you what they want. What's Is it worth a stress? I don't know enough about what a stress means. <laughs> so, what, when you're, so on your card, you'll see you have stress boxes, right? I only have five of them. That's not yeah. a lot. And when you, when you fill them up, you get another trauma. Oh. Well, that's not so bad. <laughs> then I think I'll have to look, but I think if you get three traumas, you're dead. That seems oh, no. fair. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take the edge. Okay. And then so, there into the world. My All stupid right. brain thought of the edge from like the guitar player. <laughs> from Bono's here too. Yeah. All right. So you told Maxine to take who with her? Uh, I said. Uh, Robin. Robin, okay. She says, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, Robin can go down, and, and you said you'd come with us, but um, does that mean that, like, I don't have to do any alone time next week? I don't know what alone time means. Oh, you know what alone time means, Zeke. <laughs> it's terrible. I don't think I'm that kind of cult leader, Craig. <laughs> Let's no, say, Craig, I'm not ones. that type of cult leader. Yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can you can reject that, Jim. If you don't if you don't if you don't want that, you can reject I, that. I don't I don't think I'm that type of, of okay of, of cult leader. She goes, but will, but I do think like if if the idea is that she you know doesn't want to have to do her chores for the next set of 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 time, then I think that's something that I can I can work out. Do so. you think you do you think you can get Meg to do my prayers next week for me? I think that can be arranged. Okay. Uh, also, alone time could be less creepy and just like sit by yourself and pray. <laughs> time out. <laughs> like, yeah. go meditate for an hour. I was going full creepy, but yeah, uh, I knew you were. But <laughs> because well, because, I because like, we have. What does that mean? We have safety tools in place. By right? in a room, in a corner. It's just like, grown ass mean? adult women just sitting in a corner in a chair, just <laughs> silent for an hour. Wearing their That's whole almost hat. worse. Wearing their holy hat, like put yeah. on your holy hat. Yeah, you know, it's it's just a ball cap we found around it's, somewhere. It says right, dunce so for some reason. <laughs> we have we have Zeke, Maxine, and Robin coming back over. While they were gone, anything in particular happened between uh, Troy, Len, and, and Tim? Uh. I think we I think... made fun of Zeke a while. <laughs> think what? I think we made fun of Zeke a while. <laughs> well, I, I, Tim's going to turn up to you guys and go, I mean, I get it. I do. And, and I appreciate the fact that you guys are, you know, nice to nice to him and all, but people are a little freaked out by Zeke. 
and he's been wanting us to do, you know, like everybody's got to start praying and like, like, t- tell me something I don't know. Like, why is it that you two get along with him? Well, Zeke just really, really loves the blues, man. And like, he just took those girls underneath his wing, trying to like teach him guitar skills. That's all. I mean, it's a crazy world out there anymore, right? What are you doing with your fingers? Hopping fences? No. <laughs> Plucking some fat strings? Yeah, sounds a lot better, doesn't it? I, I hate having conversations with you, Lynn. D- Troy. Listen, think, I know. Do you think we can trust him? You know, he leads an odd lifestyle, but seems to be a man with at least some kind of principles and respects boundaries. All right. Well, he's going to go get some of his girls. I was kind of joking a little bit. I'm really surprised that he like took me up on it. Um, yeah, it's, wasn't expecting that either. <laughs> yeah. How, how are we feeling about uh, him just sending one of his girls down there? I, I, oh, I, no. I, he'll go with them. Uh, he's a, he's we'll a keep an, eye on him. an idealist at best, right? He's one of those idiots that thinks the sky will always turn his way, even in a stupid zombie apocalypse, but he wouldn't send him down there by himself. I'm Hopefully. gonna go get a. I'm gonna go get one. I'm gonna go get the ladder. Uh, yeah, oh, good you idea. Can't throw him down. How 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 far down is this? We'll just drop him down there. <laughs> he gives you air guns. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> so we cut. Is this? You're too much, Lynn. We, we cut back to Zeke. Uh, Zeke has brought um, two of his flock there. Uh, Troy, you have a, you have come up with a flashlight. Len is standing there, and then Tim comes back with it with a, a ladder, and he kind of sets it down. Um, I, I think, like, I honestly, I had no idea this the caves extended this far, and I th- just think, like, I know how much we've explored, right? We've never explored this far, we've never gone a half a mile into these caves, and I just, I think we should just get an idea of of, of what the hell's going on here. There's so many of these un unexplored caves in this area. Never know what you're gonna find. Yeah, isn't that wasn't that, that shoot that you were one of your uh one of your flock tried to get down and wigged out because it got a little too tight? Maybe it's down that way. Maybe, maybe. Uh so how far down is it? Does the ladder touch the ground? It does. It does, but yeah, it's a it's a good twelve foot down. So it takes up takes up the entire ladder. And if if we believed that there was a main entrance, do we know, I guess, which direction it would be? Roughly west of here. Okay. But at, like I said, that's a good... The, if this is the same cave system, this is at least a half a mile away. And at the most, you guys have explored maybe up to a quarter mile in some directions. Um <clears throat> And really, when I say that, not only that you've explored, but even like that was part of the tour. But there was there was fissures and things that people didn't yep. didn't really go into, right? All right. Well, we're we're gonna take the flashlight and we're gonna head down into this horrific cave system. Okay. So Z- Zeke and his uh, two friends head down. What's Len and Troy doing? Uh. I'm just gonna watch the ladder. I want to say, hey, if you find a Johnny stash of Oreos, just bring them back. All right. It's been a long time since I've had some saturated fat in this world, and man can't live on just simple sugars. Right. If we find a giant stat, we'll we'll get right on that. Yeah. Hey, you know he loves mint Oreos. You ever hear him talking in sleep? If you find any jars of anything. Don't don't drink it. <laughs> that, nothing good comes from cave jars. Cave jars? A man. What kind of idiot experience. has a cave jar? A man who speaks from experience. Nothing. <laughs> Wait, do you have cave jars. jars? What do you put in your cave jars? Never mind. Don't Never. don't worry about that, Lynn. All right, Zeke, you you start heading down. Uh huh. Um, and. You've got, remind me again, you've got Maxine and Robin with you, right? Maxine and Robin, yes. 
who both fortunately have survival as skills because they've been chosen specifically for this that's, task. That's good. Uh, equipment, equipment wise, do they have something? Um, that they brought with them. Well, Robin has tools, quote unquote. Uh, uh -huh. I don't know exactly what that means in terms of what might be useful, but uh, and 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 Maxine has a gun. She does have and, a gun and and lockpicks oh. in case you know one of those jars is locked or the the cabinet of Oreos has a, has a lock on it. We'll be able to unlock that. Not unlock the Oreo cabinet. <laughs> important thing all right so as you head down i'm gonna remind nate and dave just to double check your traumas double check your past make sure that you remind yourself when you may may or may not want to use them and also double check your relationships zeke you get to the bottom uh who's holding the flashlight uh you know what i am so this thing passes it extends to the east and to the west. To the west will take you towards where you know the known caves are. So if this does, in fact, connect to those caves, you'll go west. If you want to explore deeper, you'll go east. Uh, I think first we want to try to listen and see if we hear anything that's sort of not those two yokels above me uh, to see if there's you know any sort of uh, disturbances in either direction in particular. Where you're standing, you've been in caves just like this because you went to the cave system. You went to the to the the the, uh, the tourist quarry, right? And it's that shorn rock. It's wet, so there's always just like this trickle of water that's always at the bottom, and you can always hear water dripping when you're in these caves. It has a faint smell of like mold, um, not overpowering by any stretch of the imagination, and it's really bright, the light that's shining through the hole that Troy put his leg through, um, that, that they kind of widened out for you. But it's super freaking dark in either direction. And your spidey sense goes off, little Zeke. Uh, something that I think that everybody's acquired is where you just go, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think I like this. <laughs> I don't think I like this at all. So I want you to assess a bad situation. So that move right. is when you assess a bad situation, you draw steel. On a triumph, you get to ask me two questions on an edge one. And when you act on that answer, you get to draw an additional if you do a move that's based off of the answer. So what do you have in steel? I have three in steel. Nice. Very steely. Go ahead and draw your three steel. I draw my three cards. Now look at my three cards. I have a miss, miss, and triumph. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I choose so triumph. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and recall those because you always, we always reshuffle the uh, survivor deck, unlike the bite deck, which which we uh, actually just go straight through until we have it. So on a triumph, you get to ask me three questions. Um, those questions are: What here is the biggest threat to me or the enclave? What here is the most useful to me, my allies, or the Enclave? What's my best escape route, way in or way past? And who here is most vulnerable to me, my allies, or the dead? So who's more who's more vulnerable, you, your allies, or the dead here? You get to choose three of those, Captain Triumph. Oh, man. And I have um, to answer them as the GM. Is there? Can I see that list? In you should. Uh, if you go to page 11. Okay. There they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to know what here is most useful to me, my allies, slash the Enclave. I'll even throw, or, or do I have to pick one? You have to pick one. Okay. Uh, then what here is most useful to me? As you shine the flashlight in both directions, I think what you realize is that for you, This could potentially be where you have your church. So far, the Enclave has not let you have any type of structure. Everything's being used here at the, at, at the, at the fields, right? And this, you know, if you could get some lighting down here, if you could make this kind of yours, 
you potentially could turn this into a place of worship. That's what this area is most useful to you. Um, what here is the biggest threat to the enclave? It's you and your possible church. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the biggest threat to the to the enclave here is there's now to the east and to the west two new ways into the enclave that you were not aware of. You've got the forest. You've got your fence up. You have you've been you know for uh, months now. The the farm the fields have been pretty safe and everybody's kind of got the watch the road watch this part, watch this clearing, watch for these trails. Suddenly you realize there's two new ways to the east and to the west of getting to this. And this, the east takes you deeper into the into the farm, right? So this may not be the only area where you could potentially use these caves to get to different areas of the farm. Mm -hmm. And I think... I want to know what is my best escape route from here. Back up the ladder. Back up the ladder. Definitely back up the ladder. Just because you're so far from anything that you know. And your gut tells you that even though it's underground, you understand to the east more because it's more under the farm. You don't know what the hell, like you go west and that's taking you back under the forest, right? And who knows where that goes? So I think that, you know, if you couldn't use the ladder to get back up, maybe heading east, you'd be able to find something, maybe a, a shaft of light that tells you that there's another weak area and you can ask Troy to throw his leg into it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I still think, despite that it seems like the worst uh, direction, uh, that, uh, we, I think we want to go look to the West because I think that our, our most vulnerable position there would be that someone would come from outside of the Enclave and the, you know, the the entrances that we know are out to the west i think are more exposed than what might be i don't know that there's an entrance to the east but i yep. i believe there's an entrance to the west so zeke you start heading west slowly going through um uh with your allies cutting it back outside troy and len what are you doing um i uh, if I'm like, so I just started like picking up the ladder and like pulling it back out. I'm like, I don't know if zombies can climb, but a little worried if they can. No, I mean, you're, hmm. you're stealing my ladder, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing anything. You're going to stay around and make sure they can get back out if they come back around? Cause... Of course. I mean, who doesn't want to see chickens fall in a hole and break their faces? You want to hang you out? A, Come on, I'll bet you, you got five another bucks. chore to get done, Lynn. Five bucks. We lose at least two chickens to gravity. So Tim, Tim turns to you, Len. He goes, I thought we just got done saying that you like Zeke. Yeah, I just don't like zombies coming out of a hole. Did you think zombies can climb? I don't know if zombies can climb. Yeah, but uh, all right, but like, just put it in a place where we can quickly get it back down again. All right, it's right here. Look up. Hey, Zeke, you all right down there, buddy? Uh, can I hear you? Have I moved too you far can. away? You, you okay. can hear him, and I think that causes you to turn around Let's and see, see the no remnant ladder. <laughs> of the ladder lifting back out of what? the hole, which is a good ten foot above you. What? What the hell? What? You know that you can't climb that fast with your club foot? I certainly can't climb that fast if you take away the ladder. Look, we'll send down a rope. You just grab it and we'll pull you on up. Probably. Great. 
I'm just teasing. Here's the ladder. <laughs> so the ladder starts to Idiot. come back down. Um, Jeez. Zeke, whenever you're in these caves, it's always like 10 degrees cooler. Um, just the nature of, of the caves themselves. And... <laughs> What, what the hell is Lent doing? But whatever. So the, the, the edge of the ladder, you start to see the ladder being slowly fed back down again. And I think in that scenario, we, we, Maxine and Robin weren't feeling great. <laughs> see that ladder go away. <laughs> but thank God they're with you. Thank God they're with you. Um, they were both kind of walking back towards the, the hole <laughs> um, when they saw that happening. And you know, every once in a while you get a drip of water on your head, you know, just because this just these caves are wet. Um, what is not normal though is the piece of steel you feel in the back of your neck. Uh oh. Don't you say a fucking word. Tell him to pull the ladder back up. You hear somebody whispering in your ear. And you've got a really good idea that whatever that is sticking in the back of your neck, you don't want to find out what comes out of it. Lynn? Yeah? He wants me to pull Tell the him. ladder up? Why don't you go ahead and pull that ladder up for right now? I'll, I'll call you if you when when I need to put it back down. Do you know that Jesus can't make you fly, right? Uh, I I know I know. I'll, no, I'll call for you to pull it back down. When, I'm pretty when, sure. When I, I, I could just leave it here. I'm just messing with you, bud. I'll 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 tell you when I need it back down. All right. Maxine yells. Oh my God! She's got a gun. She starts to run towards the ladder. Oh, the noise is so loud in your ear, Zeke. Maxine is shot. Oh, Craig, you're killing my ally. And she falls to the bottom right where the ladder is. Lennon Troy, you hear some noise down there, but you definitely heard a gunshot. Mm -hmm. This person that has was whispering to you has now kind of grabbed the back of you and pulled you close to them. And after firing the gun, she puts the gun right back at the back of your head. Craig, why are you doing this to me? I'm going to make it even worse. We're going to take a 10 minute break. So yes, no! no! we'll be right back. <laughs>
body falls. Zeke, you've got the gun back on your head again. This is a woman talking to you behind you, a voice that you do not recognize. Quickly, you want to cut up to Troy and Len hearing the gunshot. And I'm going to have Tim kind of has wandered off. He's within earshot, though. He did not hear the gunshot, though. Holy shit. Holy shit. What the hell was that? Uh, I'm going to... Do we have another flashlight up here, or did they take all of them? I can, we can say Troy brought two. Uh, I'm going to grab the flashlight and shine it down there. You shine it down there and you can see someone face down at the base. And you can see that there's blood pouring from her back, back right shoulder. And I think, I think you, you, there's a big enough difference between how Robin and Maxine look that you know who it is as well. Uh, I'm going to like try to shine it, uh, away from the body, uh, but I linger a little bit on, on the body and then I'll try to see what else is in there. Angles are wrong. So you're not seeing anything else but cave. What you doing, Troy? Uh, I think, I think Troy like peeks in whenever Len flashes the flashlight, sees a body and I, uh, he's going to run, run over to, uh, to Tim, Tim. We got a problem. Yeah. There's someone. Someone's in that damn cave. What do we need? Someone's in the damn someone cave. What are you shot talking about? One of Zeke's girls. We got a problem. Yeah, yeah, we do. I. Okay. Uh, and he's been kind of like one of the higher ups here, I think, Tim, because he's he's the one that let, that taught everybody how to farm. Taught everybody how to take care of livestock. He maybe brought a cow or two with him when he came here. So he doesn't live here, but he's he's been a big part of the food sustainability here. And he looks to you, Troy, and he goes, I I, I don't know what to do, man. I mean, so any I mean, veneer of leadership and anything just is gone. Don't don't warn the family. Don't, okay. don't panic anyone. Just get that out of the house. Should I should I get old Jim and his kid? That's the tr- the two hunters. Yeah, go go grab them. I guess that's as good as we're gonna get. He leans in over and he goes, "I'm gonna have him get the. I, I've been hiding some guns. We're gonna we're gonna come back with guns." Oh, thank thank God. All right, that's he he takes off. Zeke. <sighs> Craig, uh, don't worry, no. Zeke, I'm bringing guns. Craig, Craig, Craig's can, not down there. Uh, can, uh, but just one moment. Can you can you see my card? Can as, I see as GM? Can you see my past card? Oh, um, well, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I can steal your card, which I'm not going to do. Is it a mechanical question? It's a mechanical question. Just ask it. I mean, okay. Uh, so, uh, my card says reveal to reveal this card, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, does the act of revealing it, do I need to make that happen to reveal the card? So, if it says to reveal the card, then you have to, then there's a condition in order for you to be able to reveal it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, I think. I'm going to say to this uh, young woman, you, you've you made a mistake, dear. Uh, Do not call me dear. I'm not your dear. And, 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 and she's, she's pressing this, the, the, the front of that gun, you can still feel the warmth of it having been shot. She it, it, it's like uncomfortable, right? So she doesn't just place it there. She keeps kind of doing this with it. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, it, if uh, if I were a person who were, let's say, historically used to violence, how comfortable would I say she is with this pistol, with this weapon, she, with this gun? Uh, great question. Great question. Within a second, she had the gun to your head. Saw Maxine take off. 
with limited light of just this flashlight creating a certain ambient, put the gun away from you, shot her, and put it right back. She is proficient. She is she is good at this gun. I'm gonna give you a little bit more. As she's kind of doing this to you, she goes. Is Troy up there? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I'm afraid I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, and Craig, from my sleeve, I'm going to produce, uh, which is not a thing on my sheet. But a I'm dove. Making it a thing. Say a dove. Uh, it's not a dove. It's <laughs> a shiv. It a rabbit? It's a shiv. Uh, Ooh. And I'm going to uh, gouge it into this woman's neck. That sounds like you're trying to negotiate with her. Is that right? That, that's that's correct. <laughs> That is correct. <laughs> All right, let's, an artery. let's go to the moves, baby. That mm -hmm. is a straight up turn to violence. Would you agree? <laughs> I, I would agree that that is a a, a a a turn to violence. So from your sleeve, you now I gotta ask, uh -huh. why does Zeke have a shiv in his sleeve? Uh, Zeke, uh, well, it's. I'm trying to, you know, you don't have to reveal anything. There, it's just, there is, there is in the current in the current day as a, the, as a, as a, uh, as a prophet, as a prophet, uh, he keeps a shiv in his sleeve. That is correct. Uh, and he is fully aware that uh, God is punishing us with, with all manner of evil in this world. And he has been tasked to rid this world of it. And, Sometimes you have to protect yourselves, and sometimes it's better if your targets are not aware of that when at, at all times. So, real quick on the spectrum of profits, uh -huh. I want to know where you fall specifically to your quote unquote flock. Do you feel responsible for them? Uh, uh... Like, do you, do you really give a shit? I think that they each serve a purpose for me. Okay. And so losing one is important. Got it. Got it. All right. When you turn to violence against the uninfected, draw savagery on a hit, trade harm and choose options. On a triumph, choose three, and on edge, choose two. What do you have in savagery? I have two in savagery. Draw it up, baby. So I'm going to draw my two cards and hope for the best. I have an edge and a miss, so I'm going to choose the edge. You're going to choose the edge. So on a edge, you're going to choose two. So go back to that page 10. So let me give you an idea of what's going to happen here. By default, one thing is going to happen, which is you're going to exchange stress. Um, and it, that could, it could go as far as being harm. Because nobody comes out of violence unscathed. So these choices are going to determine, can augment that situation, right? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to inflict terrible harm. That's one. And... I'm going to suffer little harm. The shift slides out of your sleeve. Can you give me the choreography here? Uh, so I feel like uh, situational awareness, like he's, you know, sort of knows that she's standing behind him and, you know, to this position. And I think uh, the, the blade is on the same, like, the blade is in the same hand that she is on the side, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think he literally just, as fast as you could imagine, it just right up in into where she would be standing, where he heard her voice come from. Um, would it be fair to say Robin has never seen this part side of you? It would be fair to say that Robin has never seen this this happen. Zeke, this side of me. 
you take this shiv it goes right into this woman's eye the gun comes away from you she falls she steps back hits you with the, the hilt of her gun so you get hit in the head which in the long list of things that could be happening to you right now <laughs> getting pistol whipped by a woman who's got a, a shiv in her eye we'll take that so mark two mark two stress for me she she stumbles back you take the flashlight you shine it back she's in a full u.s marshal's uniform with a ball cap and everything which completely links up to you going she's good with a gun right you figured that out pretty quick and she collapses and you can hear footsteps running away behind her you don't see who it is but somebody's running away and you can hear them in that murky little streamy water at the bottom of this cave running away. Troy and Len. Um, I'm coming down the ladder. Uh, I've grabbed the crap rooster that everyone hates and I'm like ready to whip it at someone's face. Okay. Len comes down rooster loaded. I want to, <laughs> I want to holler up that he needs to go get, uh, I forgot her name again. I had it in my head. Uh, Len, fetch Tasha. Um, Hurry up. So when you tell me to do that, can, can I see? So I'm, I'm assuming I'm like a little down the ladder, right? <laughs> like when I see, can because he's got the like, I can see the dead body and I can see at least the very injured. As soon as you, as soon as you get down, you flash the light up. Uh, Lennon, you see the situation, right? So you see Zeke holding his head, kind of staggering a little bit. He got pistol whipped. You see somebody who you do not recognize laying there, bleeding from her face with a something protruding from her skull. And like Robin is frozen. And you can't, you can tell that Ro like Robin can't tell whether she should go help Maxine. Should she go help Zeke? Should, should she get the F out of here? Like, this doesn't happen at the scrapyard. I'm well. I'm Robin, just see the fun. vaccine. Oh, oh, oh and, and she immediately goes down and she starts tending to Maxine. Yeah, I, I brought you but... a rooster. <laughs> and, and she kind of, she kind of looks at you, but she doesn't look at you like she's annoyed. She looks at you like this was expected. That you're just being Len. She just goes kind of like, no, not now, Len. And, and she goes, she goes back to Maxine. Uh all right. Well, uh I guess I'll go get who do you want? Uh Tasha, your nurse. She's not my nurse. No, I'm sorry, I was that was to Dave, Tasha. Yeah, I, I knew it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna literally spike this rooster at the lady that you threw the, uh, the, the lying body. I'm gonna just like throw it and then like climb up, and not like gently, just like. Yeah, the rooster doesn't survive that action. Um, <laughs> Troy, you hear a rooster mm -hmm. die. And you see Len coming back up. I think I think Troy's like armed himself with like a pitchfork and it's just like Is ever, everything all right down there? Well, I was a lady with a bad eye and another lady with a, a bloody head, but you know, more meat for the meat farm. Uh <laughs> excuse me, I gotta go get someone. Yeah, you do that. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all right down there, Zeke? Uh, <laughs> she's not breathing, Zeke. She's not breathing. Zeke, sh Zeke, she's not breathing. Oh, my God, Zeke. I think she's dead. Zeke, do something. How's this? The woman in front of me that that I stabbed at, in the eye. At your feet. Yep. At my feet. Is is she breathing? No. Well, uh, I don't. You go check, but she's not moving. Okay. Because uh, if she's not breathing, then I am going to reveal my past card. Uh, if right. I can figure out how to do that. You should be able to pull it right out of your right hand. Drop. 
Drop it right on the past. And then I'm gonna And then once you get it in place, hold it. on, I gotta show the crowd. Hold on. How do I, I want you to move it? it to the past slot and then flip it? Oh, it's got a handle. No, I can't move it, Craig. Uh hit the you got the arrow selected on the far left? Or the are the uh letters? What what tool do you have? There we go. There, there oh. you go. Aha. I gotta change out of the letters. That's what it is. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And then I can right click and flip it. Are you, you ready? Can. All right. Oh, uh, Zeke oh was a no! Killer before this. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so real. Uh, and so yeah, Zeke uh, knows that God is punishing us for being evil because Zeke has committed many, many evils. Uh, <laughs> and so now, if he has to commit violence against the uninfected, he gets to use his steel instead of his savagery. And I think what happens is Robin turns, she's like, Zeke, he's not breathing, he's not breathing. And, and that's when Robin realizes what the hell you just did. And that's when Robin pieces together, you're a violent person. Because you took a really sharp, really sharp toothbrush and took out a woman with a gun. <laughs> It's okay, Robin. She has abject fear in her face, looking at you. It's okay. Uh, She's not. She, they they uh, had to be punished. Uh, I, I understand that. I understand that, Zeke. Zeke, she's 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 not well. She's not well. Uh, I'm gonna go see if there's anything I can do for Ma Maxine. Uh, but if she's not breathing, I don't know that I have any skills to fix this either. Like, Troy's come down the ladder and she's like. Walks up and is just in stun. Just what happened here? There, there are more. They went whatever way they went. Did they go east or west? West. They they headed west toward towards the known caves. Did did we? All right. Well, uh, uh, oh, oh. let's uh, let's let's see if we can take care uh, take care of your girl here. And, uh, who is who is the other girl? Meg. Uh, there's Maxine and Robin. Robin. Okay. Robin's alive. Robin, step, uh, step aside here, dear. Um. Zeke, you've been checking on this woman in this marshal's outfit. And Troy's now you're you're satisfied. If there's anybody in this world that understands when someone's alive or dead, it's Zeke. <laughs> Cuz Zeke has seen a lot of people alive who then became dead. <laughs> you start to realize, okay, now I'm going to focus on Maxine. but this thing has grabbed your ankle that you knew was dead. I kind of forgot about that part. <laughs> the, <zombie apocalypse. laughs> the whole other thing that's happening. The whole other thing. <laughs> I'm going to give you half a second. Go to the zombie moves card. Troy, you're taking in all of this information. Robin is, is now screaming that Maxine is dead. Um, you see movement where there shouldn't be movement. Uh oh. And I want to cut to Len. Len, where would you find Tasha? Um... I think that we've got a uh, pregnant so and uh, because she's the only person with like medical knowledge, she's doubling up as the vet for the farm too. So I go check there and she's, you know, uh, so you come around and she is elbow deep in a cow. She goes, Len, it's coming. It's coming, Len. Come here. Come here. Help me out. Help me out. All right. But we got a dead one. 
No, no, this one's alive. I can feel it. I feel it. Just it, it's no, having no, trouble no. coming no, out. No, then it's a person. Like we got a dead person. There's caves and a gun and a dead person. What are you talking about, Len? There's a cave. Is this one of your stories, Len? No, no. I mean, to be fair, but no. <laughs> no, Troy shoved his hole down a cave. Zeke and his girls went down there. One of his girls got shot. Zeke killed a guy or a lady. Or I don't know. And uh, and then I threw a chicken at him. And now I'm here. <laughs> it's coming, by the way. No, no, I got that. I got that. Um, Len, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say this back to you like we've practiced and all you say is yes no right all right are you ready sure len is there a person in trouble right now no <laughs> and she's and you see her just go <clears throat> len is there is there something more important that i should be doing than than bringing this calf out she's already dead Okay. Uh, where can you see Tim? Is Tim around? He's right there. Tim. He's just outside the barn. Tim, come here, buddy. So Tim comes around the corner, and goes, "This is yours, Tim." She pulls her hand out, and Tim knows exactly. Like Tim goes in, Tim's delivered as well, and she's and she's she's following you, Len. And as you're going, she's like, Len. Yes. Is anybody in danger right now? No. Okay. Len, why did you come get me? Zeke, Zeke is bleeding from the head, but he's not too smart anyway. Okay. Len, if I promised you a strawberry circle, yeah. lemonade, yeah. would you think Zeke is Zeke could get worse or get better? Which one would you bet on if I gave you a strawberry circle lemonade? I mean, probably worse. And, and the two of you are running <laughs> during this conversation, <laughs> right? Pro probably worse. Okay, honey, you just you just keep running towards where it is, and I'm following you, okay? Yeah, it's right by the chicken. Oh, by the way, I killed uh, King Crown Neck Dead Man. Uh, he, he was the worst. <laughs> what? Cut back to Zeke. Uh, I'm going to choose dispose of the dead as it, uh, to, I think, I don't know if I'm allowed to choose the move specifically, uh, but I feel like that's the thing I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is like right. It. So this, this, this definitely qualifies. So for those of you watching, there's a move called dispose of the dead. When you dispose of the newly deceased, actually, I'm taking this back. This is somebody who has not turned yet. Right, so this is so this would have been maybe something that we should have done if we were more familiar with the rules before she turned. <laughs> so okay, I think I think we're so you think I think I'm fighting the dead. Yeah, I think we're ready to either fight, fool, or flee. So you can either fight the dead, fool the dead, or flee the dead at this point. What do you think Zeke's reaction is as his ankle is grabbed? I think he is going to fight the dead. Unfortunately, because. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like you can't really feel good about this, are you? <laughs> well, you know, I'd feel better if, uh, you know, I, I I thought to stab her in the eye <laughs> so that it didn't turn into a zombie. Right. When That's you try really to fight a swarm, if you try to fight a swarm of zombies, draw savagery. Uh -huh. On a hit, you greatly reduce their numbers and choose one. On an edge, the GM chooses one as well. I want to give you plus one cards because right now it's just one. Uh, and and I'm drawing from the. You always draw from the survival deck. Okay. So let me just make sure that I've recalled. You have not. Okay, and then shuffled. All right. So what is your set? What is your savagery? My savagery is two. I want you to draw three because it's right now. It's just one. favorite miss miss triumph <laughs> miss miss triumph okay so on on a triumph that's a hit uh i don't get to choose one you greatly reduce the numbers and choose one so what are you going to choose so that's on page 14 the choice is just for those of you playing at home 
He can, you can attract the attention of a third party, end up in a bad spot, draw from the bite deck, or you mark stress or suffer harm, your choice. And remind me what the difference is between stress and harm. Harm is I'm going to give you a trauma card. No, I don't want another trauma card. And I already have two stress. I don't really want any more, any more, no more parties. <laughs> uh, How many cards are in that bite deck again? How many cards are in that bite deck? I know one, one of them are. Fifteen. <laughs> Fifteen, the rules book says. You got good odds. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> well, this game could be over for me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to draw from the bite deck, because I don't right, think so I you... want to pull the people back, and I don't think I want... So this thing, you're going to end up in a bad spot. So this thing, the, this zombie marshal yanks your ankle. You fall forward and fall flat on your face. Draw from the bite deck one card. Uh, it is safe. Read it up. Safe. Nothing goes wrong for the moment. <laughs> okay. Go deal, deal it off. So you sh you pull your leg out, pull your leg away, take one stress for me. And this thing, this woman is, and she's, she's starting to like, this sharp toothbrush is out of her eye, still sticking out there. And she's starting to try to get a grip. Now this is, she doesn't have a grip on you and it's start, starting to try to come towards you. Troy, you see this, what are you doing? Oh, uh, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna turn to Robin. Robin, get out of here. Go. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to get her to get her to get out of here. Yeah. So let's go ahead and go to the regular moves. Let's go to a basic move. You're gonna ask an NPC for help. So when you ask a friendly or neutral NPC for help, draw a soul. On a triumph, they'll do what you want. If you give them a bribe or a motive on an edge, the GM will tell you what they want to do it, and they'll return the favor. Soul so what do you have in soul? I have one. All right. Draw one card. It's an edge. She, she says... Promise you could seek out. I'll get him out. Now run. And she goes to the ladder. I do. So <laughs> Just sitting. move forward, my pitchfork. <laughs> okay. Just... I, I greatly reduced their numbers. There was one. <laughs> <laughs> She's. She is. She is not standing up. She's just, she's grappling towards. Uh, like, I want to, like, kick her over and then, like, stomp the shiv the rest of the way through her brain. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do another fight the dead. Draw two cards again, or do I get to draw three? Because she's still only one zombie. You can definitely draw three. Uh, we have to send those other ones back, though. Oh, oh yeah, my my edge is still in play. <laughs> no, you're you're drawing. Yeah, you're drawing from survivor. So hold on, I'll recall. All right, you missed shuffle. Triumph. All right. <laughs> oh, whoops. I did I did pull two misses out for you, but I also pulled the triumph out for you. <laughs> Go for Take it. it. Miss Miss Edge. All right, so on an edge, I get to choose one. You choose one, I choose one. Ugh, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad here. Uh, I guess I'm gonna choose attract the attention of a third party. There. Okay. Hopefully not more zombies in my caves. I am going to make you end up in a bad spot, so I want you to draw from the bite deck. Um, 
threat, something breaks, something in your environment breaks, GM will tell you what. Troy, as you are at the base of this ladder, taking everything in, you turn back and you grab the ladder out of instinct to get, like hold it for Robin. Mm -hmm. Robin starts to climb up it and the and the ladder falls, falls <gasps> apart. And Robin comes tumbling to the ground. Len, you're at the top of this now. Um, you're there with Tasha. And you're standing there, all this activity's down. You see the you see the top of the ladder fall down. Tasha's like, what is going on? Like, what is this hole? She wants you to explain everything. You look over her shoulder and shit, it makes sense. You fired a somebody fired a gun. Hmm. Someone made noise. And you see the first couple dead coming out of the forest on the far side of the barn. Robin uh, doesn't see it. Uh, dead ear. It's walking at us, Tosh. She turns back and she goes, I don't know what's happening right now, Len. Um, Troy's tuck his hole through the ground. The girls and Zeke went down there. There was a gunshot. Zeke's ability, I think. Uh, I don't know where Troy is, and now there's zombies walking at us. So, w one of us is down there hurt. Uh, Zeke is down there, and there's at least two. Uh, I'm pretty sure the other girl's dead. So she puts her arm out. She goes, lower me down, honey. All right. And you start to lower her down, and she looks up at you, and she goes, I'm trusting you to protect the fields. Yes, ma'am. And you let go, and she drops down. Zeke, uh, ha have I have I dealt with the the it's Marshall zombie? Okay. Uh, Something broke, Troy, uh, and it's not just the ladder. Something on Robin broke too. She's holding her arm. Zeke, you recognize there's no ladder. What in the... Uh, so first, I'm going to... Uh, check on Robin. Are, are you hurt? Are you okay? She's holding here. She goes, I am, but... Maxine's going to turn, Zeke. Do I, do I see Tasha at this point? Yes. Uh, Tasha, can you check on her? If that's true, uh, I'll deal with it. Check on... Maxine. I want to make sure... Is, is Maxine actually dead or just Robin thinks she's dead? Robin says she thinks she's dead. She looks dead to you. Contract killer. Okay, then she's dead. Uh, then I will <laughs> deal with her. I think again, with, since since Troy has zombies. no context, I think Troy would be. You want me to take care of it, Zeke? Or, I mean, she's one of yours, I guess. I'll handle it. Uh, All right, Tasha, see see to Robin, please. Tasha goes to Robin. All right, so now we definitely get to do dispose of the dead. So when you dispose of the uh, the newly deceased draw savagery on a hit. You do what needs to be done quickly on an edge. It isn't smooth going mark a stress or draw from the bite deck. Your choice. Okay. What do you have in savagery? Uh, still two. All right. All, all these great plans of being able to start using my steel now have fallen apart. Craig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't go into a hole. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you dug the hole in the first place, though. Uh, uh, you'll need to re retrieve the survival oh, cards. Oh, sorry. Yep. Thank you for reminding me. So I'm going to recall. recall um, is there a place all. you want me to toss these? Uh, the bite cards? Just throw them somewhere. Uh, they don't get reshuffled. 
Right, they don't get shuffled back in until I get bit. Yeah. So I'm going to keep drawing them. Okay, so you've reshuffled the survivor deck? You the survive the yeah. I'll draw my two cards. Uh I pulled a triumph. That's a hit. And it's not an edge. You do what needs to be done and done quickly. What are you gonna do, Zeke? Uh, I, uh, she stopped. You, the, the the bleeding has stopped. Right. Which means you right, don't right. have much time. I think he'll have fetched uh the, the he'll have picked up the pistol and he will use it like a hammer and 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 basically smash her head. That's how we kill zombies in this world, right? I want to know that happens, but I want to know Troy's reaction. And I think it's really up to you, Nate, because this could be something that Troy's very familiar to seeing. This is the necessary thing we do in this world now. Or I did not know Zeke could do that. Like, what is Troy's reaction watching him hammer this gun and crushing the skull? of Maxine. I think Troy's a little surprised um, at how efficiently Zeke is able to jump on this duty. Like Troy was fully prepared to do something similar. Um, so it, it just, it comes as a surprise that Zeke is so immediately willing to step up and just do it. I think Troy's, instinct is to try to keep himself between Zeke and Robin and um, Robin and Tasha as like as like a physical like as much as he can keep a like physical visual barrier between what's happening there and the young injured woman. How does Len execute the very clear orders from Tasha? Um, so I was imagining that there's like We've been at this a while, right? So they're coming out of the forest, and I feel like we've dug ourselves like a spike ditch around the area to time. keep like pads over it, right? So people yep. can get in and out easy. And I think I'm going to go like just break one of the bridges that they're coming at. Like I'm going to like just smash it to bits. You, so you may not stop them, but you're sure as hell is going to slow them down. Yeah, and like I imagine that, like you know, depending on. I mean, there's zombies, obviously, but there's, like, pit traps, right? And there's, like, people coming with guns because, you know, the hunters are coming. And I'm just, like, you know, protecting the fields. I think I want you... I'm going to... Tell me how you feel about this, uh, Dave. Go to 15. Okay. I feel like this is, in a weird way, barricade a place. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Instead yeah. of building, you're destroying, but... I picked up destroying your I was thinking about using my juggernaut present where I smash my way through scenery to get to or away from something. And that gives you a bonus, right? Uh, then I draw savagery on a hit. I get what I want on an edge. I mark stress, leave something behind or take something with you. You're my choice on a miss. I smash through without care. Or draw a card from the bite deck. So I'll give you a couple options. Cause I agree with you. I think that definitely fits too. We can do that. Mm -hmm. We can do barricade a place but you get to choose what you want. You can choose savagery instead of survival because barricaded place requires survival, but mm -hmm. you can do it with savagery. What, what makes more sense to you? What is, what is Len trying to do right now? Is he just breaking shit knowing it's not going to, it's just going to slow. No, I think it's more a barricaded place. Like if I was trying to like get away by like going through the wall of the barn or something, then juggernaut makes more sense Okay, that way. Um, and I still want to use Juggernaut by replacing Survival. Yeah, I'm, I'm for that. I, I Are think you good with that? Yeah, that works for me. All right. So let's do a barricade of place. When you barricade a place against the zombies, draw Survival, in this case, Savagery. On a hit, the location is mostly secure. On an edge, mark Stress or suffer serious harm your choice. All right, so I'm drawing three. And always just like pops them up in a weird spot. I got three edges. So I'm choosing an edge. So mark Stress. I'll mark a stress or suffer serious harm. You want to mark stress. Stress marked. All right. So walk me through this. You've got like seven of them now. 
and they're they're headed towards just this this log spike pit that you guys got on the other side of this fence that would stop no dead right yeah um and i like the idea of there's there's mattresses that have been placed there uh well i don't know i don't think you'd leave them up though there might be mattresses on your side of it right that someone could flop over to mm -hmm. climb over so what is len doing um so i i think that we i think we have like a little rope like kind of crappy not crappy but like you know like a children's almost a children's bridge like that you'd like put across uh a river or something right like in today's world but we put it over like a spike pit trap or like a um you know we've dug a moat not a moat mm -hmm. whatever, with spikes um that is a real name that i can't remember anyway so i think i'm just literally like ripping the stakes that hold it out on our side just like out and throwing it into the pit so just like... and what's happening is we're starting to see zombies fall into this pit and and being stuck right they're not dying to this that's not what this is designed to do to kill them it's designed to stick them right so they right. can't move and yeah, you're starting to see like, that they're like spears in them and like, yeah exactly and, and and the problem is is that the next one <laughs> eventually fill has up. less yeah. spike right but you are you are reinforcing this you're creating more spikes you're, you're you are definitely taking care of it we cut back down tasha turns up to you troy and goes they're coming out of the woods. We've got to get out of here. Well, all right. Uh, One half second piece of information, Troy. Mm -hmm. You recognize the woman that Zeke killed. You thought Good. she was dead. She lived with you in the other enclave. You thought you left, you left her for dead because you thought honestly she was dead. Now she is. But go back. Tasha says that to you. We've got to get out of here. Well, are we going back up or are we going through the caves? Well, the ladder doesn't look to be in a state. <clears throat> the... Uh, so one, I think I'll mention that she was asking about you, uh, before she, uh, I guess it was before, it might've been after, I don't remember, uh, after she shot Maxine, she asked about you. We're going to have to talk about this. Her friend Close left will, Zeke. to the West, to the West. West is back to the known caves. East is back to under the farm. But but the people who the the other people who left the other footsteps west. you heard run away went to the west towards the known caves. Her her friends went west. That probably means they know there's a way out that way. It's probably the way they came in. We should go that way. Yeah, that would make sense. That'd put us closer to the the, the known exits. Let's see if we can find a way out of this uh, this hole. Would this? Would it be fair to say that Troy and Zeke are trying to assess a bad situation? I think that sounds quite <laughs> accurate. This is a pretty bad situation. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be drawing steel. Who's the better person to be assessing? We are this bad even. Situation? You're both a two? Yeah. Both, both threes. Oh. I've been drawing cards in a while. Uh, don't forget yeah. to pull the oh. cards back, though. Yes. All right, let me prep the deck to make shuffle sure I've deck. got everything. Recall all. Shuffle. Troy, why don't you assess a bad situation? I would love to assess a bad situation. Uh, Not with three misses, though, apparently. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, apparently not. <laughs> Uh, it's bad. Okay. <laughs> Just had to bring here. up the whole she was calling my name out, Zeke. Just stress <laughs> me out. <laughs> Len, you're still in, you're, you're holding it back, but you're losing this battle. What are you doing, Len? Can you hear me, Len? Yeah, I'm sorry. I 
was still thinking about what. Oh, no, that's okay. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure you heard me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Take your I, time. I did not recognize myself as Len. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I heard the question. I was like, I "Think you were talking to me?" Anyway, back to um. So I'm I'm doing this. Okay, I'm going to um, gleefully start like chopping apart zombies that are like getting closer to me, like stabbing them in their uh, heads because I assume that they're not like, you know. They're relatively constrained. I'm just enjoying like squishing bugs because if I'm hearing this correctly, Len, you're leaning in, not running away. Yeah. I uh she told me to hold the line and uh she did. You know. She made she made very she had very clear instructions, Len. This is definitely a fight the dead situation. So you are definitely going to try to fight a swarm of zombies. I want you to draw savagery, but I want to give you a plus one because of the preparation that you've done so far. So what do you have in savagery? Three? I have three. Draw four for me. Uh, so I'm drawing four. I'm cycling down. And uh, edge is my best. Edge is your best. All right. On an edge, you choose one, and then I get to choose one as well. So if you go to page 14, what are you going to choose of those three? You got you attract the attention of a third party. You end up in a bad spot, draw from the bite deck, and you mark stress or suffer harm your choice. Uh, I think that I'm going to draw the attention of a third party because I think that I'm like gleefully cackling and yelling as I'm like murdering uh, zombies. I'm like, come on, you bastards. Okay. I'm going to choose... You end up in a bad spot. Draw from the bite deck. So I'm going to have you, Len, at like right at the edge on your side of the of the um, moat. Mm -hmm. And then the ground gives out. Right. So you end up sliding into the pit. So you're sliding into the pit where all the spikes are, where all the zombies are. And I'll tell you about the third party in a second. So but let's have you draw from the bite deck. All right. So now I go do, 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 bite, draw one card. One card only. And I am safe. So you slide down there. You're holding them off. <clears throat> but there's motion. There's more of these things coming out, right? Where where the things that have been dying, they've been falling into this moat. Thank God for this moat. But you look down and those aren't zombies. Those are people. Maybe about 200 yards down coming out of the forest. And they are armed. Uh, back under. Go ahead. Nope, nope go ahead. Uh, I was going to be like, hey, y'all, there's good killing over here. <laughs> we cut to commercial. We come back. We're underground. <laughs> <laughs> With Zeke and Troy. Uh, uh, well, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, uh, say a small prayer over Maxine. Okay. Uh, collect and hide my ship. And her goulash of a head. Yes, <laughs> yes, okay. I, I know, I know. Okay. <laughs> uh, make sure that Todd has his uh, he had a uh, pitchfork. Pitchfork. Oh, Tro Troy. Troy. Yeah, yeah. Troy. 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 Sorry. Has 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 his pitchfork. Uh huh. Uh, and I have the pistol. And we have uh, Maxine's gun as well. Okay. Uh, and I'll. Uh... Troy, you Troy you're part of this. Of what was that? Uh, You're part of this. You're down do, here with him. Do, do you mm. know how to use one of these? And I, I hand him. Uh, well enough, I suppose. The pistol. Uh, and I ask Robin if she's okay to hold the flashlight for us. I'm not leaving her. We'll you said that to Tasha or, or, or to Robin? Robin has got a broken arm. Like bone exposed. And Tasha's tending to her. 
we all need to move. Can't stay here. I'm going to stay here with her. And she's talking to you the way she talks to Len, which is a little like, mm, right? <laughs> you can talk to Len that way. You can't talk to me that way. Because <laughs> I'm staying here with her. You protect the fields. We don't know if there's anything else down here, Tasha. We should stay together. She turns to you, Troy, and she goes, Troy, I need you to take care of this. I'm not I'm not arguing with this. I'm not arguing with him right now. First, we got to find a way out of here. We're stuck down here. Uh, okay. We're going to, we're going to take a different path. We're going to take a different tack. Uh, I'm going to hand Tasha the other pistol. I'm going to say, you keep her safe. She, she we'll takes it and acknowledges that you have passed ownership and sets it down on the ground as she nods. She needs both hands. You keep but her she safe. Agno- she acknowledges. She acknowledges. Uh, I say, Troy, we're going out. And we'll come back around. All right, let's go. So I think we're going west. Yeah, I think I think west west makes the most sense to me as well. Zeke, Troy, and the flashlight, a pistol, and a pitchfork. Head west. I think that's where we're at. I'm going to take the pistol back because you can have the pitchfork. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> You turn a corner and see another ladder. Well, that's handy. <laughs> but this isn't like a makeshift ladder that you've seen from the farm. This is a construction steel ladder that's leading up from a much larger hole. Interesting. Oh, that wasn't disturbingly close yeah do we do we feel like this is like inside the perimeter or outside the perimeter or this would be Good outside river. the perimeter okay okay this was going deeper not up into the woods this was heading back west they went west towards the right known. The ladder is it coming up out of the woods or going deeper into the ground it's going up Sorry, yeah, it's going. Oh, geez, I hadn't even considered that it would go deeper into. Go down, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Oh no! (laughs) And now we're now we're gonna play Trophy Dark. (laughs) (laughs) And now we're going to the Forbidden Lands. (laughs) Hey, we're in Stone Loom Mine. You see insectoids. (laughs) Oh gosh, Um, Craig just can't get enough. (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna put you in a damn dungeon. (laughs) Uh, I want to. Listen at the, the uh, basically at the base of the ladder to see if I can hear any. Activity. You're gonna go to the base of the ladder. Yes. Troy, you following Zeke? Yeah, I'm gonna stay close by. I need to understand Len a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So Len, you are really annoying, but you are beloved mm-hmm. because. If you ask Len to do something, Len's going to do it. Just yeah. be real careful what you ask. Be like <laughs> specific. Like, be, be, be very specific. specific. <laughs> and I think we cut to watching Len shred the zombie situation. And what I would need to understand about Len right now is you're in this pit doing exactly what you were told. Mm-hmm. You've called to these people, which is a very reasonable. These are not zombies that have come out. But as you are splitting your attention, they are armed with better weapons than you've seen at the field. And they are negotiating what is meant to stop zombies, not people. I understand Len said, hey, the killing's good here. Do any alarm bells go off? Or does Len immediately identify them as 
you are not zombies, so you're us. I think I'm on the not zombies, you're on my team. Like, level of understanding. They're not reacting to you. They're being very precise. They are working their way to come into towards the farm. Mm. Zeke and Troy, you're at the bottom of the you're at the bottom of the ladder. You look up and you see trees. Which makes sense, right? As you've gone through the caves, we'd be back into the forest at this point. Okay. Uh, I am going to attempt to quietly climb the ladder. I will Try. hold the ladder. <laughs> okay. Safety <Good>. first. <laughs> Jim, you pop your head out. Zeke, and you look, you've been to this part. This is just on the other side of the fence, just on the other side of the moat. Quickly, you get oriented. You can see the fields. You can see the farm. Ahead of you, you see people you do not know negotiating the moat. To your left, you see Len, doing what Len does best. But he's a good 300, 400 yards down from you. These people negotiating the boat are 30 yards from you. Do Troy, they, you're at the bottom. Do the they line. appear to be uh, outfitted in the same manner as... The Very similar. Okay. They are outfitted with body armor... They are not carrying hunting rifles. What's going on up there, Zeke? We're we're close to the fence line. Uh, it's good. I, it's good. You need to whisper to not be heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's okay. That's fair. Uh, I'll just to him. Uh, I I see what looks like they must be her her friends. Your your friends' friends anyway, uh, and they're heading towards they're heading towards Len. I think we need to move. Uh, and I'm going to continue to climb up the ladder and get out of the way. So Troy, there was a division of U.S. Marshals that were part of your enclave that were sent out to save the enclave to buy time for the enclave. And you did your job. You got as many of you out as possible. In fact, you got exactly four because the card told me that. <laughs> but you had written off these U.S. Marshals. But as you passed over her body, you recognized her and her outfit. That's not a good sign. Should we, uh, should we get the girls or should we go and try to help? I think we should help first and we'll we'll come back and get the girls from the other All side. Right. Troy will climb on up. Pitchfork in hand. <laughs> Pitchfork for assault weapon. Good combo. <laughs> we're fine. We're fine. Uh, we're also going to pull up the ladder. Ooh, okay. You guys start pulling up the ladder. Nobody hears that because of the gunshots. The one, the ones of this this little group that have gotten on the other side now of the of the moat are firing on the zombies that you're fighting with, with precision. Like you're you're doing your thing, right? You're like your back is against the far side of the uh, 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 of this thing, and you're just you're ripping arms, you're grabbing spikes and put it right in their forehead because like you know that works and then like as you grab one to put one and then you see the gunshot blow its head off and damn it Len you were right there's people and zombies and people are shooting zombies you assess the situation correctly sir <laughs> you're the best at this uh, he can Troy as you pop out of the hole you're seeing that make formations on the other side of this. Go ahead, Len. 
uh, we're still we're still in the middle of the fight where the zombies are getting chopped out, but not done yet. Right. So, I'm like, good shooting. <laughs> you're you're led encouraging uh, Troy's old friends. Well, that's reassuring, I guess. They, they must have been shooting at him. <laughs> How about the really bad shots? One of the two. <laughs> Can't imagine they would. They're here. Things ain't good. Why does Troy think that? I think if they're here, that it reads as a sign that, like, there's probably a whole horde of zombies falling behind them. Oh, okay. Like, if, if they're here, this is the sign that things are about to go downhill. We're at the appetizer stage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're here as a warning. <laughs> okay. All right. So Troy and Zeke, you're out. You are at the top of this ladder. You're pulling the ladder out. This friends of Troy have not recognized that you're have now got them at their six. They're concentrated on their 12, which mm -hmm. is watching walking towards Len. How contained is the zombie situation? That sounds like a move. It does sound like some kind. it must be a move of some kind, right? Assess the zombies. <laughs> the thing is, would that qualify as assess a bad situation? Do you think this is a bad situation, Zeke? I I, I think so. I I also could argue that I'm trying to avert a disaster, but I, I like <laughs> assessing a bad situation. Yeah, I don't. I I think things are fluid right now. Like I think this third party is an unknown quantity who right now is very obviously not targeting Len, right? So I would say avert disaster if they were trying to shoot at Len and, right, right, and sure. zombie, that's right? That's not the case. Um, these are well-trained and they are shooting zombies at this point. Um, you've also already met one of them and they tried to kill you. That's right. So they are obviously not necessarily 100% on my side. They're not giving you a little note that says, do you like me? Check yes or no. Right. So I think we're safely at the assess a bad situation. All right. So we're going to draw steel. Uh huh. What do you have? Uh, I have a uh, three in steel. Have we uh, recalled the deck? Uh, no. Never hurts. So let's go ahead and recall. Maybe I can get all the shuffle. Deck. So what do you draw on three? Uh, I will draw three. Uh, I pulled an edge along with two misses. So I will take the edge. We're going to take the edge. On an edge, you get to ask me one. So go to page 11. I'm going to read to the people at home. We can, he can ask one of these of me. What here is the biggest threat to me or the enclave? What here is the most useful to me, my allies, or the enclave? What's my best escape route or way in or way past? And who here is the most vulnerable? To me, my allies were the dead. Go ahead. What here is the biggest threat to the Enclave? You've been at this farm for a while now. You've been here with a bunch of tourists, a couple of hunters that when the getting was good, they got it. But when they ran out of bullets, suddenly food got real scarce. Um, so they may have been a bunch of preppers that were real great when they had, you know, bullets. But I don't know how great of a hunter him and his son were. What you've never seen before, Zeke, is this level of precision. This group, which I've labeled Troy's friends, <laughs> are, are precisely mowing down the dead. And I want to say that your internal calculus pieces together. We got a pretty good thing going here. I don't know what Troy went through, but Troy doesn't like talking about it. And the biggest threat is them. 
because if they become a part of the of the fields, you don't know what could possibly happen. The dead is a constant. But you know for a fact that this group would take over the fields. Does that make sense? I think so. I wasn't sure it was the answer I wanted, but it's it's an answer that I half expected, so <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm going Car- to Cry's right there. He's familiar with them. You know, that's a good that's a good point. I should at least ask him what he thinks about these folks. Uh Troy, what what what's your take on 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 these folks? We need to move quickly though. <laughs> We're not making tea. That's right. <laughs> I also invite so... Nate to read his card again. <laughs> yeah. Um Would you like to read your card? I read my card again and went, oh man, I forgot to relieve my stress when I murdered that lady. Well then re- ah. relieve it. Go ahead and take care of it now. You feel better. Mm-hmm. Constraining all that evil to not exactly. murder. Exactly. I removed that evil. Oh, I also don't know how to erase. They have to get you know, the marker the arrow and then highlight it and press delete. So I think what I'd like to do. That was actually that was actually pretty easy. It's just that I didn't know how to do it. I think what I'd like to do is take this opportunity to open up to to (gasps) Zeke. Ooh, what does that mean? Um, So when you open up to someone uh, about your feelings or your past, draw on soul. Except as a refugee. If I'm talking about my uh, my past and the awful things I witnessed on the previous enclave, they get to draw off of survival instead. Very nice. Um, so I think Troy's going to go into essentially how on the Nelson farm when these marshals showed up. You, know, you don't. You're not going to do anything yet. Okay. So when you fl- open up on someone, your feelings, your past, you draw soul, but you're drawing survival. Yes. So let's do that first, and on a hit. Uh, two misses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> on a hit, you both clear yeah, stress. That doesn't happen. Deck, but... On an edge, they choose one. That doesn't happen. Continue, please. <laughs> uh, on a miss, I reveal relieve too much and mark too stress. <laughs> oh god! Due to being a refugee. Are, what are you telling them? So I think I think this is where um um. Uh, Troy starts to almost break down a little bit. Um, and he starts telling Zeke about how these marshals showed up and basically threatened, almost started like a protection racket at the at the Nelson farm. Um, you know, offered offered to keep the zombies off our back, but you know, a good chunk of the 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 harvest would go to their their little gang, um, and whether or not they were actually like former marshals or had just acquired a bunch of gear from a depot, no idea. But they are, um, and what ended up happening is over the course of their stay at the Nelson farm, Troy decided to be the big man and try to stand up to them, and that um that resulted in a bit more of a, uh, a firefight, which got Mr. Nelson killed. Um, so I'd like to take this opportunity to reveal my trauma of Defiant. Ooh, what is what happens there? Uh, so Defiant gives me a... Uh, I'm doing this. Oh, wrong card, wrong thing. That one's still on no. marker. It's very marked now. No, it's not. I think it's right-click flip. I'm right click to flip it. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's bloody now. I get plus one to my survival. Nice. Uh, and while revealed, I, re- I and I clear stress whenever I refuse a reasonable order. You're just obstinate to be obstinate. Funny. Yeah. yeah he's, <laughs> he's a bit, a bit of a hard ass. About it. <laughs> um, but now he's crying about it to, to Zeke oh, as they're approaching these. Uh... So I feel like most of the Murder decisions gang. are happening at the forest where we have Troy's friends, but there's still some zombie fighting happening. So unfortunately, Len, I need to do that again. 
So right. can we quickly do a fight the zombies move? That's uh, another Sir uh, uh, Savage, right? It's just punching zombies. Yeah. I make sure to reset the deck. Oh, yeah, right. A lot Thank of misses you. out there. A lot of misses sitting out. Seemed okay to me. Yeah, probably, <laughs> but. Uh, I get another edge. Down two minutes. Nice. So on an edge, you choose one, I choose one. Page uh, 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember. You think I'd it's remember. It's also on the that. reference card. There it is. Uh, basic moves. Turn to balance. Uh, nope, because it's the zombie. It's over on zombie moves. Yep, zombie moves. All right, so we're fighting dead. Um, I think. I think I'm still just like shouting and yelling away, like encouraging the gunfire, like trying to punch these guys. I think I'm still just like raising a ruckus. Okay. So which of those three are you choosing? Uh, attract the attention of a third party. Okay. I don't want any more parties. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, you're, let's ha have you end up in a bad spot, so I want you to draw from the bite deck. All right. Draw one. Draw. I get threat, which means... Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, something breaks. Something in your environment breaks. The GM will tell you what. The moat is finally giving out. So you've been fighting the fight. You've been helped by the spikes, but the spikes are overloaded. The bodies, as much as as much as Troy's friends are helping by killing zombies, they're also making the sure, moat so. less effective, right? Yeah. Um. So you recognize. This isn't this isn't good. I can't stay here. Mm -hmm. Um I'm not gonna bring in another party, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in the third party. I think that Troy's friends have recognized that they have with the, the zombies are now pushed back into the forest. And they're now firing on Len. Mm. So I need a quick avert disaster. And how do I do that? Which one's that? So go to basic moves on 10. Mm -hmm. Avert disaster is actually on 11. When you try to avert disaster, say what you're trying to prevent and draw survival. So you, are, you Len, realize the bullets are not being fired at zombies anymore. You see the bullets hitting the dirt near you. Uh, well, then I want to survive clearly. So, if you want to you prevent being shot? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's very clear. Big, big fan of not getting shot. You're gonna draw survival. Uh, are you gonna read to call the cards? I will, <laughs> and I will shuffle them. Wait, it didn't see. Hold on, I see an edge out there. Call all. There we go. Is yes. it the uh, was that the bite edge? Yeah, I, no. Th there's no bite edge. Mm. Now you draw from survival. Draw. Then I must have drew from the wrong place because I got an edge and I. Whatever. I get an opportunity and a miss. Yeah, a threat is what you got from the bite deck. A threat. It's called a threat. Uh, I'm going to mark. A, I'm going to try to mark a stress correctly. So I'm going to mark a stress. Make that a triumph. To make it a triumph. A triumph, you manage it. So how are you? You are now being shot at. Mm -hmm. So what is what does Len do when Re Len recognizes that? Um, I think that uh, Len is going to uh, get down and get down through the moat that's been cleared out by the zombies slamming into it. So they get around the corner away from them. So just like putting, like just cutting the angle so that they can't get to me. Troy, you recognize there are less zombies, but not less bullets being shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 
Troy. Head around to the, I don't know, flank is that flank is the word I'm thinking flank of. They don't, well, but but they still and, have no idea that Zeke and Troy are there. They right. don't know you're there. And and so what I'm thinking is you're gonna. What I want you to do is I want you to to not divide my person my my perfectly reasonable order. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I and I want you to to go, uh, you know, out and around. And go get, I want to say you said it was, I don't remember the hunter's name. The hunter and his son okay. and, you know, rally the troops. Old Jim. Old Jim. It was Old Jim. I couldn't, I was like, was it Jim? Like, uh, am I, Jim. <laughs> were, we, were we close enough that we could tell they turned fire onto, onto Len? Oh, there's no question. They're okay. not firing on Len. So yeah, I think actually I'm going to def defy a, a reasonable order. Zeke, we got to help Len. The damn hunters aren't going to get here in time. We got to go. We got to help. In true Walking Dead fashion, we're going to flash back. <laughs> the two of you had a brief but intense blow up. Mm -hmm. What brought you to conflict? The two of you are fighting again. What did the two of you fight about before? When's the, the last image, time you were in conflict? The image I had in my head, the moment that got brought up, was that when either when we showed up or when Zeke's little church showed up, he tried Aram, to convert. Aram is the word you're looking for. Yeah, I didn't want to say that because he's not that kind of not that kind of cult leader. Um, but I feel like he tried to convert. You know, at least one, if not most of my oh, refugees, to his religion. Yes, I think that's. And fair. Troy didn't Troy didn't take too kindly to that then either. I did very briefly think, could I convert these these but marshals? After did that work? <laughs> no, not the marshals. He's talking well, about the refugees. No, he's talking about yeah. his people, but the marshals oh, yeah. were his people too. Current we currency. About that. Um, uh, yeah. And I hmm, and I think the good. reason, because then like when we were talking to uh, to Tim, the reason that Troy kind of got over that is that Zeke was able to maintain a boundary. You set a boundary and Zeke respected it after Zeke, the Zeke's respected it, so they that's why they were able to push past that in their relationship. So now let's flash to the current. With with your defiant revealed, you get a bonus. What is that bonus? Uh, I can clear a stress whenever I def defy an order. All right, so do that for me if you have any stress. You're welcome. Just one erase. Welcome. <laughs> uh, just go back up to the arrow select. Click on it and hit delete. Whatever you use to mark it. He's like, I just made an X mark. All right. So you have delete. two stress ah, currently. Got yeah. it. Yeah. All right, you're yep. good. Okay. Uh, All right. So yeah. Zeke, Troy says that to you. Uh, and let's stop. Troy is going to start like not running, but like moving uh, towards helping Len I'm, with his I'm, pitchfork. I'm, I'm, my intent was that I was going to move towards helping him as well. So my, uh, I'll I'll move towards them as well, uh, attempting to be relatively quiet about it, uh, but moving swiftly. That's happening, Len. You now are kind of like in a uh, foxhole because you kind of turned the corner right on, on the moat. You you pop up. You see them, they've stopped shooting because you've gotten out of range. You've popped your head up. You see them moving with this formation. And you see one of them like make motions towards the fields. Half of them are breaking off and heading towards the farm. The other half is continuing down the line of the moat. But you also see now Zeke and Troy coming out of the edge of the woods from behind them. I'm sorry, uh, Craig. Just how many of them roughly are there? There's like eight. Oof. <laughs> Shit. I thought there was like two. <laughs> no. Oh no. I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna so so far I'm moving towards uh Tasha's hole, right? Like there's like half of them moving towards Tasha's hole. Not really towards. I mean, ish, but they seem to be more focused on the building. So the one thing going for Tasha's hole. Um, is that there's just like the little stable for the for the animals and the chickens, the chicken house is there. Mm -hmm. They they seem to be going towards the main house and the main barn. 
All right. Um, I'm going to go to the um, the bull's pen and this guy, and I'm going to try to like break it open so that the bull can like charge these guys and and uh, and give them some what for. That's pretty sick. <laughs> let's have that just happen. So let's have you heading towards heading towards the main barn, and you're gonna let out the bull, um, the bull that you've been using using to breed more cows, which explains what Tasha was doing, right? We know there's a bull there. Um, so yeah, so you're 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 gonna let the bull out, Troy Zeke. Do we see the bull come charging out of the barn? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so you said they roughly split in half. One half is going towards the the buildings, and the other half is going along the moat, where where they last saw Len. Okay. Uh, I would like to follow that collective. And okay. so, just real quick. It's going to take work and time for you to negotiate this moat. There's a moat between you and everything that's happening. Sure there is. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Designed specifically to stop the zombies. And and, and you, you, there's nothing that we need that's to flip. Like, like, you'll be able to negotiate no, no, yeah, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but it's, it's going to take time. Right, right. And they've already, they've already passed through most of that so they're they're, they're on the farm they're, side of this yeah yeah, yeah yeah uh i mean there's nothing to do for it but to do it uh as it, it, if i reach a point where i feel like i am within range i good range if you if you, you know what i mean uh i i will fire on them but not until like I'm I'm confident that I will solve problems when I do so and not just alert them. There's a group heading towards the farm. It sounds like to me and to, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're running parallel to the moat trying to catch up to the other moat four. Yes. That are that are headed that way. And once you feel like you're within Zeke's level of precision. Correct. And you've caught up enough, you're gonna start firing upon them. Is correct. that fair? That is fair. What's Troy doing? Um, I think Troy's trying to find a good, like trying to find the earliest spot that he can get to cross in to try to close the distance. He, he wants to help Len more than anything. You start to negotiate the moat. Zeke, you are turning to violence. So let's do a turn to violence move for you. Uh, have we pulled all the cards? There's still cards. Yeah, there's still cards out. We are shuffled. Can I do that? And they're shuffled. Uh, and because I, I'm a, I'm a contract killer. Uh, when I turn to violence against, that's what it said, right? When I turn to violence against uh, the uninfected, I get to use my steel instead of my savagery. You do. So I will use my three of of steel. You have a very specific set of skills. I do. <laughs> uh, I, I have an edge and two misses. Edge and two misses? Yes. So, so I will on choose an the edge. edge. On an edge, I get to choose two of these things. Uh, I would like to inflict terrible harm. And I would like to resist marking stress. Boom, boom, boom. We just, we hear Zeke's gun open up. And we see two people. We hear two shots fired. Two people drop. Jesus Christ, Zeke has done this before. <laughs> 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 so... The other two turn, they stop running, they turn, they start firing on you, trying to somehow use part of this uh, 
uh, moat is cover, like some of the wooden stuff in there. They're kind of sliding into the moat to fire back on you, but you immediately drop to the ground, have no trouble avoiding their bullets. Len, I think as you let the bull go, I think we're going to, I think I'm going to misuse avert disaster. Okay. So if you go to page 11. Yep. Uh, vert disaster. Uh, trying to use my survival. Cool. So the first thing I need to do is understand what you're trying to prevent or try to do in this case. Uh, yeah. So I'm trying to uh, prevent them from going at the uh, farm and get distracted by the bull. Perfect. If they get murdered. <laughs> but, I know it. <laughs> you know. I, I was I was ordered to protect the field, so I am right. trying to buy time for old Jim to be useful. All right, without Jim reminding me, I actually recalled and shuffled. All right, so it's a survival, which I'm a dose on. So I'm drawing two. Survey says, oh, doobly miss. Uh-oh. What's the bull do? Uh, I think the bull just, like... I think the lounges bull's... out and eats grass. Yeah, I was thinking like just like, like what? Like what? <laughs> Stands there. They're not wearing red. This is fine. Yeah. I, so I, I don't know. Um, so I don't know. It's either chases me up or like, or I think I just enjoy the idea of the bull's just like what? <laughs> <laughs> He's living the high life, right? He's like a breeding stud now. He's just like yeah. I don't know. It it doesn't even recognize that you've like opened the gate and you're slapping it and it just kind of turns to you and just gives you the whatever look. And it's it's not going anywhere. So what's Len's reaction to that? Uh so then I um I'm gonna start uh yelling at them uh I'm like Semper Fi bitches and I'm just like <laughs> right like uh just uh shouting and shouting and running. Towards the uh, four that are headed towards the farm. Yeah. That is a uh, turn to violence, sir. All right. Um, that is page 10. Page 10. So 10, which is almost certainly savagery, right? Because uh, yeah. it's got to be right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you would recall and shuffle, sir, I will try to beat some federal agents to. Uh... You're all right. I choose to believe they're not real federal agents. <laughs> well, again, edge and two misses, so I'll be choosing the edge and marking the stress. Wait, is that not how this one works? No, no. You, on oh, an edge, you choose two just, on page 10. Oh, I'm going to inflict terrible harm and uh, avoid collateral damage. So you come charging out of that barn. They did not see you in there. And maybe they've been better off if the bull had come out of that barn, but it's not. It's Len. So Len, you're taking two out. How does that happen? Um, so I think that I um, literally just like um, grab a farming implement of some variety, something sharp, and I just come running out and screaming at them and then just like, they're they're turning to get me and because maybe they are or not real federal agents i they kind of get in their own way and i get on top of them and like just start bashing a guy in the head with like a hammer and uh, uh and i think it's a, I think it's a horseshoe hammer friend. yeah, yeah. you got like a ball peen horseshoe hammer and yeah. you just come out of that as they come towards the edge of the barn and you are just you take the first one out boom you're on top of the second one. You're beating them out. The no collateral damage is both of the, of the, um, uh, what's the name of the assault weapon? That's not an assault weapon. I don't know. Uh, AR-15. Well, AR-15. Both AR-15s are on the ground and they are fine. So you take, so you've got two AR-15s, no collateral damage to them. They are there right next to you as you're beating the hell out of them. And the two of them, the two left are so startled that they come back and they're trying to put their guns up to do it. But do you have a half a second? Troy, you have now negotiated. I'm, I'm going to reveal my trauma. 
Ooh, Ooh. okay. Uh, which is morbid. Uh, I really enjoyed beating the ever living shit out of that guy. <laughs> he deserved it. So what's morbid do? Uh, so morbid is clear a stress when someone dies in your presence. Take plus wow. one ongoing after someone dies in your presence until you have a moment to catch your breath. If multiple people die in your presence, clear stress for each, but only take plus one ongoing total. So you're going to take plus one ongoing. You've cleared two stress because you've killed two people. And I'll figure out how to do that, which is this and this. And I clear. Nope. And just don't rem don't forget. So if you continue on these people, the last two that are remaining, you're going to be in a plus one. Troy, you see Len burst out of this barn with a level of violence that makes you very happy you're friends with Len. <laughs> <laughs> and also you hope he recognizes you. <laughs> right. Len's just turned into a berserker. Zeke is just popping off shots. <laughs> what? <laughs> what sort of what sort of farm is this? <laughs> they kind oh. of uh, can survive it. Apparently, um, good lord. Also, I've accidentally deleted my trauma. <laughs> oh, what was it? Uh, defiant. Okay, we'll remember. Um, I'll God. remember that for sure. <laughs> I guess I think Troy's just gonna like throw his pitchfork at the guys who was uh, that Zeke that shooting fire at Zeke. The guys who jumped, dive, like dove down onto the ground. So we've just got two they groups. still have guns. <laughs> yep. So we've got two groups. You're going after the moat crew, mm. not not the not the barn crew. We'll separate. Yeah, Len, that Len, one. Len seems capable of handling himself, apparently. <laughs> so if part of you was thinking of going after them, <laughs> you're realizing, yeah, I'm gonna go after. I'm just I'm gonna. gonna... <laughs> oh, all right. So let's <laughs> do, do it. I'm gonna turn to violence. Yes, you are. All right, I have a savagery of two. This is gonna go so well. Uh, recall the deck for me. Oh, yep. Give me one second. And it is shuffled. We'll draw two cards. <laughs> and a miss and a miss. You are good at this game. Oh, Troy. <laughs> good old lovable Troy. Poor, stubborn, stupid Troy. <laughs> Troy, you're going to end up taking two stress. Uh huh. What happens? I think I think Troy like goes to like sees Len charge these guys and just like, all right, turns back to the guys who still have guns and like throws this pitchfork and it just kind of like rattles near these guys and one of these guys just turns and in their efficient martial way just pops a shot and you know Troy just buckles all of a sudden i think you get winged right so i don't yeah. think you get shot but you get winged and you and you're yeah. taken to the ground zeke like you're seeing hit. this you're seeing this you're taking all of this in you're taking in len you're taking in troy getting winged and falling to the ground you've taken two of them out they have now taken cover uh, uh i'm still gonna move towards them and uh attempt to find a better vantage point and and, and, and take them out. Uh, is there a thing that happens before violence? Uh, well, it, it, so you've got, you, you can definitely turn to violence here. You can assess a bad situation. I want... I, uh, do I want to assess a bad situation? I don't know. I think I want to help. Oh no, I don't want to help because I don't want to. I don't want to mark stress. That sounds terrible. What is that? Is anyone card from their draw? Oh, I see. That's I got what that is. That's a different thing, which is important. And maybe I could have done it earlier, but I hadn't read that one. Uh, no, I think I'm still turning to violence. Uh, I think Do that it. I'm. I'm uh I'm, I'm moving forward to attempt to find a, a good vantage point on them and. You know, continuing and to you try to get myself undercover. And you still while... get to use steel. And I still get to use steel. And have we pulled back cards? We have. 
Alright, you're just waiting on me now. Uh, Miss Miss Edge. Uh, so with my edge, I will choose to so inflict edgy. terrible harm and resist marking stress. I think. Do I take a harm? Do I have to take a trauma? To is that how that works? No, you're fine. All right, you're, then you're I'm going to. That's your, that's your, that's the correct choices. I think that's the correct choices. <laughs> yeah, you take the other two out. You avoid getting shot. All you see is the pitchfork in the ground next to the other two you took out. The, the Old man Troy. Pitchfork, you know, it turns out pitchforks are not aerodynamic at all. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just like flung this thing and it's just like. It did, that, did like a weird wobbly throw. He thought he could defy gravity too. <laughs> Len, as you take out the second one and you pull this shoeing hammer out you've got the other two backing up going S -s 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 stand back stand back as they point their guns towards you um i'm going to um i'm going to try to threaten them um but not like be friendly towards them i'm trying to like uh So I guess I'm just going to try to beat them. Like I think I'm in a, a blood uh, blood frenzy. I think that yeah. like, my trauma is just like there's no there's no like you're bad. I'm good. Protect family. Murder. Yeah. Two down. You're literally a go. barbarian. Yeah. yeah I feel like Len people. is two down, two to go. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think at some point life was like there are rules. <laughs> This is an um, dude. There are rules. You are supposed to go through the front gate and no shooting at Len. <laughs> no shooting at Len. <laughs> you protect your family and we're all good. Tied the farm together. Yeah. Turn to violence, Len. Uh, oh, don't forget to pull the cards back first. Don't need the cards. The cards. The cards. The cards. Pick four. You're shuffled. All right. Draw four because I'm three plus one. Oh, I forgot about the carry on the plus one. Um, I have an opportunity as my high, so I will mark a stress. Well, I'm not going to mark a stress because I'm pretty sure I'm going to murder some dudes. I would mark a stress to turn that into a triumph. Yes. So you get to choose three. All right. So let me go look at my. So I'll we're going to. I'll save you some time. Yeah, with no repercussions, you finish the job. Yeah. I think these guys are not used to mur like dealing with crazy blood streaked murdering <laughs> farmer guys. They're like, oh, we pick on bully, we bully farmers, and we murder dead things. Easy. I want to cut to the next morning. The three of you are on chore duty again. <laughs> Is there any outstanding questions or conversations that's going to happen after everything that went happened yesterday? It also could be a situation where the three of you don't say shit to each other. <laughs> I, I absolutely imagine that, uh, like, Zeke will rumble and complain about the fact that it, it was a simple, a simple thing I asked you to do. <laughs> a simple thing. All I asked you to do was go get Big Jim. And you couldn't do that. This is, it's the chicken feed all over again. <laughs> Listen, it all, <laughs> it all worked out, didn't it? Look, it, Big Jim doesn't move very fast, all right? They call him Big Jim for a reason. Ow. 
<laughs> like he's less pregnant than old Bessie over there a day ago. <laughs> no, you. Wasn't Tim supposed to be getting some guns? You might you might know a thing or two about feeding chickens and clearly some other skills that I didn't know about. But food supplies are running low, boys. Time to th time to teach you two a thing you two a thing or two. Let me grab it. Flip it, flip it. About growing plants. <laughs> what, what's happening right now? I'm revealing my past as a gardener. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> to my psycho murderer friends. I'm a stubborn like... gardener friend, and we're going to grow some goddamn food. Oh, Wait. Amazing. Do you grow the kind of crop that would help him meet God? Because he's going to need another disciple. That was awfully morbid, Lynn. Let's go to credits. I'm going to talk to my three players on the other side. We'll be right back. farm the federales <laughs> oh, all right we're back <laughs> all right we ran long we're uh, just over three hours so we'll keep it short and sweet dave uh yeah. thoughts stars and wishes so uh, let's start off with thoughts first time of playing this first time yeah. playing pbta fun i actually i really like it i like the move system it's um yeah very slick and uh the quick put together everything no, no dicers whatever like it's yeah, I liked it a lot actually. It's I can see where Blades is its spiritual or you know mm -hmm. child in the order of things, but I, I dug it a lot. Yeah, stars. Uh, it's got to be what uh, Troy tried to like tell about his past traumas and just like started being a blubbering <laughs> mess and Run like down. useless. It cracked me up so much. <laughs> As a table, it was I'm not that kind of prophet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in a world where we uh lose lose Bry again and we come back to the farm with a part two of playthrough three, yeah. um what would you wish to explore more about the three of you or the farm or your allies or yeah, I think um I think a little bit more about the farm uh us in the farm I think would be interesting. Uh, yeah, you know, like it's a further like you know go forward campaign. It's like oh what like I have a relationship with Tasha, but like what about the rest of the people? Mm -hmm. I think that'd be cool. Jim, thoughts? Uh, this is cool. Um, uh, I'd like the you know the the tension of go of cutting through the the bite deck. Uh, I think that's really cool that you know it it it, it, it gets hard you know harder and harder to not get bit. <clears throat> All right, so um, just real quick, we had a threat, a threat. Third one was a bite. Uh, so like, I, 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 I like the contrast between it and the survival, the survivor deck, which is more like just a standard. It, it's like a D twenty, right? It's a, it's like it's your RNG, whatever it is, right? But it's, but but you 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 shuffle through them and then come back and sh you get same odds every time. Uh, so I like that as a, as a push pull too. Um, the the triggers for for the past and the trauma were kind of cool too. Um, 
Yeah, it was it was fun. It was good. Stars? Uh I I think you know my the the moment where like all of it was like it was it was that moment between Tasha and and uh and Len where it was like no nobody's in danger. I'm like <laughs> no, no Len yeah. is in danger. Everybody and he's like well two of them are dead and one of them is yeah, he just got a bite. They're fine. <laughs> Leonard <laughs> No she's one hundred percent dead, dude. Like there's it's a dangerous situation. <laughs> I loved how quickly I think I picked up on Dave and Dave picked me up on picking him up. Like, Oh, this is a vice of men, right? Like <laughs> yeah, I, I was, Dave is Lenny. Correct. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was real happy that I was kind of figuring out where you were going and, and it just clicked. So, and, yeah. and a big part of that is that Dave and I've been playing for together for a while, but I loved, loved that. So that was a star for me too. Yeah. That was a star for me too. Uh, so Jim, uh, what are you wishing for? If we get to uh, revisit the farm? Uh, you know, uh, I think I'll, I'll echo what Dave said, and I'd I'd like to see a little more around the space of our other, uh, our other uh, collective uh, residents. Uh, I think that opening up what what's going on with the uh, the tourist party uh, mm-hmm. would be interesting. Actually, maybe getting to know, uh, getting to to hear a little more from from uh, Jim and his son. Uh, obviously, I have to collect some more acolytes to, to <laughs> fill to fill my ranks uh they have uses and uh you know maybe get that 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 whole little enclave set up down in the caves <laughs> nate thoughts i really like it um this is this is one i would definitely like to see like the actual boxed version like I can I can tell just by the design of it the way it, it sets up is is really neat and I I really like how it it all kind of comes out and yeah there's a live steam power scoundrels actual play podcast of of you guys playing this game I think that'd be pretty incredible that would be pretty fun yeah stars um so I have kind of a couple uh going back to the 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 last point where it was when when um len first went to tasha and just the moment he said a cave a gun and a dead person i'm like there's our title <laughs> there, there's our there's our you know that's the there's our movie episode. title yeah <laughs> um and then just the switch with zeke from like this kind of questionable cult leader type person to just like oh you are a killer yeah oh you scare me now (laughs) you scare me as a player and i don't know how to protect troy from you (laughs) and what are you wishing for um if we come back yeah probably to see some more of the uh more that would be more seeing more of the more of the, the background characters in in um um in play as well as see the the other two relationships uh see the details of them come out because like what the hell did len and i do (laughs) what what bad order did i give len that i didn't tell anyone about i think we could have a non-action three hours with this entire Mm -hmm. situation with all the relationships and what's happening at the farm and all these NPCs and everything. I think we could have a non zombie. Nobody's going to die. Really super interesting session. And Uh, I think, I think that that followed or that following a a session like this one, where we had the the stress of an, of a situation that helps that it flavors that, um, that profile, which is, which is, yeah, I think that's kind of what you want. Yeah, I agree. All right, next week we got another Brindlewood Bay. Um, if you came here for Forbidden Lands, Forbidden Lands will be back at the beginning of May. Uh, so we'll be back soon. Appreciate it, guys. I was really hoping to play tonight, so I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, have fun. Yeah. yeah. See you next time. Howdy friends, thank you for watching. 
All our content is archived and organized in playlists on the Third Floor Wars YouTube channel. Check it out. And if you could like, follow, subscribe, and even set your notifications to this channel on YouTube and Twitch, we'd appreciate it, and it'll make sure that you catch all of our content. I talk with creators, designers, and experts across the gaming landscape in every episode of our podcast, Tabletop Talk. Open up your favorite podcatcher and search for Tabletop Talk from Third Floor Wars. Support your creators. They make the content you love, and it's your support that makes it happen. If you want to help us, go to Third Floor Wars on Patreon.com, and you can help us for as little as a dollar a month. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Take care.